Hello and welcome to EFA. Hi everyone. Episode two six five Super Chat Catch Up, the New Year stream. Wonderful time. Oh, we had a look back. Wait, the actual New Year stream or the the other one? What do you mean? Well, because the New Year stream ended up becoming just the Chris Stuffman one, right? Is this the actual New Year? Well, Year's neither one? of them were on time anyway. I don't think so. It, you know, so the Chris Stuckman one is the Chris Stuckman one. This is the I new one. I gotcha. I... Uh, starting with, hello, Massives. Happy New Year. You're gay. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Hello, all my N-words. Hello. Hi. Molly, you weren't on open bar to defend The Last of Us show. There's, mm -hmm. uh, there's almost no point. Um... <laughs> like everyone just uh, looks back at it like, oh, what an awful thing that was. When uh, and how wrong were you, Mola, <laughs> that you well, liked it? It's it's not even. It's just like the amount of. It's, it's funny, right? A lot of the things that we'll take, for example, the killer, uh, seen as a very bad movie by many people. At least there's nothing out there in terms of really like a discussion that we've provided that would act as some level of a defense or analysis of the film. And so it's like, oh, yeah, fair enough. Like the Last of Us has been extensively discussed. The excellent quality of so much of the character writing and that, and the way they adapted for uh, TV. Um, you know, people are still citing Episode Three as like a disaster, and I was just like, "Damn!" I, I thought, don't get that one. I, I don't, don't get it either. It's because they're gay. It's because they're gay, and it's like it. It like I just don't. I just, well, the most I, common one I see I is this. Too much of a tangent off the main story, or whatever, but. Uh, I didn't realize, like, I, I, I think there's going to be countless examples of that happening in, in all kinds of stories that nobody takes issue with when it's something they particularly enjoy well, as a story, in I think. Television stories. Um, like, the nature of what it means for a detour to exist is, um, there's a discussion to be had. I mean, for instance, uh, Halo has lots of detours that feel pointless. Um, but, I mean, a big part of why I think, you you know, that's the case has to do with how valuable are these, what you could describe as detours or sub subplot side quests? How relevant are they thematically? Uh, how well do they support like the main story? These are some of the questions that are worth having. And I feel like in the case of uh, episode three, I think it's pretty clear like how, how relevant that episode is, especially thematically. That's a super important one thematically. Unfortunately, Absolutely. had there been, uh, they had to go there to get a key and a shotgun, and the shotgun went on to save several people's lives, and the key unlocked a huge thing that they needed in the final episode. I think then people would say, like, okay, fair enough, it was relevant. The fact that it's relevant thematically, which, by the way, like, if for anybody who's confused on how that works, The Last of Us, like, is about, arguably on a literal sense, the last of humanity surviving at the edge of the, of its timeline in a sense, but what is worth saving, what is the last of humanity, and it is the notion of uh, Joel's feelings toward Ellie, right? Like, it's like a, that is the last that we have. Everyone else is tearing each other apart for every last resource they can get, sort of thing. But the last mm -hmm. vestiges of what was worthwhile about humanity exist in the relationships between certain characters. And um, what that episode does, episode three, is show us a sort of tangential or parallel relationship that is super important that at the end of the world you still have these two people who love each other and that's what mattered about life and then their death and the the note they left and the relationship they had with joel it's supposed to act as a big old moment for him to understand exactly what things matter and what decisions he's going to make and all of it yeah, along with know. what happened with his daughter along with everything that fucking happens in the season informs that final episode that's that's the point that's being and, made. And for I think all of that's it. an important part as well, is that that Joel extracts something from that story. It's not a story that exists just for us as viewers. It's a story that still feeds into um the decisions that he's gonna make later on. It's very relevant. Uh, it it is certainly not pointless. It cannot be described as pointless, you know, it, it can't. It isn't pointless. It has a point, a pretty clear point. Yeah, and um uh, but then, you know, the the rest of the, the show, all like the subtle performances, the really great little like plot lines they create, even if some of them are made up like beyond the game or whatever. I feel like uh, as ad adaptations go, that was one of the much stronger ones that we got. It is, it is by comparison to something like, I know that people would say, well, you can't keep comparing it to Halo, but I can and I will because <laughs> it's, it's, Halo, it's a well, well, wait, To be clear, you're not saying it's better than Halo, therefore good. I assume you're saying... No, no, no. 
how is it that we have this level of hatred for a Halo and then at this level of fucking love for Fallout, which, by the way, both mm -hmm. absolutely abysmal, and then this yes. this complete disregard and almost hatred of The Last of Us when it is fucking leagues I ahead of both of them. Not, it is a decidedly faithful adaptation. Like, r there are changes, sure, but, like, you compare it to the nature and the gravity of the changes in something like Halo, which, as a point of comparison, same number of episodes, comparable budgets, and flagship uh, series for their respective consoles feels like a fair point of comparison. You compare them, like, god damn. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, how, how can it not be recognized as being obviously, like, a better quality and the way that it ought to be done more so than something like Halo, you know? Yeah. It's a good show. It's a good season of television. Yeah, and the the second the season, season will <laughs> probably <laughs> drop the ball hardcore with copying what happens, but who knows? It'll be interesting to see the differences, honestly. It'll There's just a... be fascinating if... Uh, if I'm not if, expecting uh, one-to-one. -one. I just don't think it's going to happen. No way. Oh, and especially if they're splitting it across two seasons, that alone invites questions of, well, what is the nature of that split going to look like? Are you going to split it between the, you know, the, the Ellie and Abby perspective, as in, like, one season for each of them? Are you going to do, like, you know, sort of split it half and half so that there's, like, partially you're doing a bit of the Ellie story and partially the Abby story? That And, and those things can, like, have an impact. We'll see. I'm not super optimistic, not going to lie. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, just be interesting to see the point of view of the person making it, depending on how the changes are made, because... Uh... Joel getting knocked out within like 10 minutes of seeing him. I just don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. But, then, but what happens if uh, Pedro Pascal says, yeah, no, I only had to do like maybe a week of shooting for the last of us season two. We're like, well, oh I, boy. I guess we can't trust any of it until we see it, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Because there would be a, a reason for him to even troll a bit on that front. <laughs> yeah, like, whoa, well, I mean, unless they want to do a bit of that for like, Man, it is crazy that they had trailers for The Last of Us 2 that showed Joel in places where he absolutely was not present. <laughs> that is... I don't know about that one. I think that you just... Yeah, you've got to be super wary uh, in mm -hmm. terms of knowing what the reception was to the second Last of Us yeah. game, knowing what the reception is to the show that you've made, and you have basically this golden opportunity to say, you know what? Let's, uh, let's not make the same mistake twice. <laughs> Whether or not they actually take it is, I mean, the, the answer just seems fucking obvious to me. But the answer is obvious. Just... But you got to remember, Neil Druckmann is uh, like heavily involved, and for there to be drastic changes would almost be an admission that he failed. And I don't know if he wants to do that. I don't yeah, think he believes he ego, failed. He's too much of an you know? egotist. He's yeah. Too well, I mean, we saw the fact that nothing really changed in the final episode. Like they didn't change anything when they absolutely could have to retcon Joel's decision. You know, <laughs> that was and shocking to me because that... like, well, I don't, I don't need to retcon anything. Yeah, that, that's what that My tells you. My writing was good. He was like, they were, <laughs> you know, I didn't retcon shit in the second one. You're like, yeah, you, <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you foolish fool! You did. We shall see on that front. Uh, Man of Long, when are you doing an EFAP for the killer? No plans for an EFAP on the killer, I'm afraid. Uh, suppose we could have. It is, there's no real like person that ultimately decides things. We kind of can be a bit spontaneous on what we feel like works mm -hmm. for an episode or doesn't. Like, um, I wasn't 100% sure Haunting in Venice would work. But I feel like it did. It did, so. yeah. Even episode. though we kind of approached it unconventionally, right? Like, it, it's um, strange. There are certain films that lend themselves so much more to a sort of straight, straight up, like, description of scene, or rather even action in scene, and then discussion. Marvel mm -hmm. make movies perfect for that kind of breakdown. They're just so well, bad. What I was going to say is um, whether they're good or bad doesn't seem to make a difference necessarily because we did that for Arcane across, like, three That's episodes. That's true, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's and not that, about good that, or bad. It's something else. I haven't even figured out what it is yet. <laughs> like, it's, it's a particular element. So, um, no guarantees, but obviously more things on the way. Howdy, Massive. It's quite the year we've had. Lots of good rat, both old and new. I played the first two yeah. Bioshocks, and they were great. I also played yeah. Infinite. Boy, those first two games are pretty cool. Yes, they mm -hmm. are. That's so funny. Yeah, they, they hold up <laughs> really well. They've got a great style to them. They've got really fun combat, awesome. super immersive world. I quite love them, uh, yeah. 
highly recommend the Bio the, the first two Bioshock games. Highly unrecommend well. Infinite. Yeah, fuck Infinite. Don't Kill waste it. your time. Oh, fire. Yeah, that's yeah, a, play that's the Suicide Squad was, instead. That yeah. really was that time when gaming journalists were like really insecure about their profession. So like any game that was trying to do a story, it's like, well, shit, we got to latch onto that. Regardless oh man, of you know what? Would have been great if EFAP was around then, because I feel like we would have. <laughs> yeah. We would have played, like, me and Rags, certainly. I'm not sure about if Fringy, if you played it day one, but, like, I played the fuck out of it, and I hated it. <laughs> I did as well. I, I distinctly remember being super excited, starting it up, and then realizing, like, oh, shit, like, this is, this is such a bare-bones version of the others. Oh, I, I did the thing of, like, okay, it's, it's gonna get, there's gonna be more. It'll be, yeah, it'll be more. Yeah, like, we'll get... We'll get all of our stuff. We'll yeah. get all the new things. We'll get all the all the stuff that the other games have. That that will happen. It's just taking a while to get there. You know, they're they're just taking it slow, and it never came. So no, a lot of things didn't come. They just didn't. Yeah. That's uh, I think it's accepted at this point, right? The Bioshock Infinite changed a lot from what it was meant to look like as a game. Yeah. It, like even just strictly from the gameplay standpoint to what ended up. Like those, some of those demos, it is a case of, yeah, on PS3 and 360, <laughs> don't know, man, good luck achieving these sorts of results on a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360. Um, and they ended with, uh, here's to another year. Here's Yay. To another year. Indeed. Moving here's through to it already. Year. Mm -hmm. This one just says, major luck. Got me. Oh, oh. you, oh, oh, Little you did. Little rascal. Uh, uh, what are your top three least favorite movies ever? <laughs> I don't know if I've thought about that. Yeah, um, that's gonna be like it, it won't be worst movies at that point, it's the, the ones that I, I don't know, would it be annoys you the most? I guess maybe, yeah, because if I'm bored by it, that doesn't feel like a strong enough emotional response. No. Yeah, it, it's not, um. Top three most hated movies. Oh. That's actually a pretty difficult. I mean, yeah, it like might. I, I mean, can, the I Last Jedi might be up there mm -hmm. in terms of what it did, yeah. what it, what it created, the defenses made for it, and how it really was. You know, in in terms of cinema discussion, movie talk, the defenses made for it, kind of what it represented. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, there is a selection. It just it feels like it's redundant. So I was gonna say something like you're know, like a Dial of Destiny. It's like I do hate that fucking movie. I really hate yeah. it too. It's the same thing, yeah. but it's gross. not up there for me. I really hate it, but I really hate a lot of things. It doesn't get to that level of like particularly special. Well, what I was going to say was how it feel. It feels like it's outclassed by TLJ. It's like it's in the same uh, relay race almost. But there's a, you know, like Secret yeah. Invasion is probably Very in that similar. race too. It's like, hey guys, it's like yeah, they're all there. All the fuckers. <laughs> that... But TLJ feels like the king. It's like step back. <laughs> I'm the one that like, I know what I'm doing. And I'm trying to think of other types of. I uh, I really dislike multiverse of madness, but I wonder how much of that was the meta surrounding it, like being absolutely floored by the amount of people like saying, "Oh yeah, no wonder, what a great character that was insane." Like, I couldn't believe that. So I wonder how much of that is like the film itself or the meta informing it. I wonder if like. Like a, a, the the hatred that can spawn out of me from something that's much older and much different, like um, hmm. like Alien Three back when back in the day when I first <laughs> saw that, how upsetting that was, or um, uh, you know the classics like Terminator, um, Dark Fate and Genesis. I was thinking of Genesis, um, but like Genesis come is kind of like a clown movie to I me. I see it I more. Know. I see that more as goofy, while I see Dark Fate more as uh, yeah, malicious. As like fuck you, fuck you, you know, kind of deal. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, hopefully that's um, a selection. So I was thinking about it. I, it's something I'd have to really think about to figure out how I would rank it all. 
Hello, you legendary folk. For my lovely wife, please, Mauler, throw in the occasional that's just silly, and everyone else tell her I love you, Emma. Guess you guys have got to say I love you, Emma. I love you, Emma. God. <laughs> Emma, I love you. It's just, it's just a interesting request is all. I, I mean, I, do, 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 are you just, you're not going to do it, is that it? Uh, that's, it's just an interesting request, that's all. Emma, you're great, all right? <laughs> Damn. All right, fair enough. Jeremy Johns feels like a real person, at least. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he feels real. Mm -hmm. You're getting opinions from him. Uh, happy New Year, Tisms. I've been re-watching your initial God of War 18 streams from five years ago and have really enjoyed your reactions to it. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, uh, if they do in five years from now make the next one, I'll happily go through them all again. I, uh, it's a fun series to watch that story unfold. Um, to have it be running this long and to still be essentially captivating with every installment is pretty cool. Yeah. You can only hope that, and pray uh, they can keep it up. That's very much the case of uh, 343 as Homer Simpson. Why doesn't mine <laughs> look like that? <laughs> 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 Maybe one day. <laughs> They'll rise right back to the top, I'm sure of it. No, never. I don't think so. Really sad. <laughs> yes, it is. It's grim. It's not unique, though. That's almost the sadder part. Well, that it's it's a pretty common occurrence to see these franchises just kind of like lumbering Crash forward burn, yeah. without any life and energy. Not even close to you. Um, boop, boop, boop. What would Mauler's saw trap be? Hmm. This is not something that I should really even consider answering properly. No, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't have to describe anything specific. What I what I wanted to do is to be real, re reasonable in the sense that I, I want it to be possible. I fucking hate the saw traps that are just impossible. They're stupid as hell. It just it just like ruins the entire premise as yeah what's well, as... the whole point yeah they just can't, can't be done you know like what tear if you just, all like, of your put... own intestines and eat them and then i'll let you go it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> can i just fair. die <laughs> this is shit what if uh, what if you did like you put a whole you put a normal size worth of mcdonald's in front of movie bob and you say all you have to do is just not eat it it's like the marshmallow experiment, you know, the, hey, don't eat that marshmallow and you get two marshmallows. <laughs> I don't know what the most, I guess this would be down to the person, you have to find this out about their life, but the most succulent, like, amazing thing they could ever want food-wise, and the challenge is, like, if you eat it, um, I guess, you know, it'll, it'll kill you, um, but, and if you don't eat it for, like, a week, I don't know how long... You'd have to make it so that it's like maxing out their uh, possible before they die, Roll but simul out. you know, you, yeah, I want to push it to the maximum, you know, right? It's like, I wonder if that would be, but, I mean, it wouldn't be that interesting to watch as, as a movie. <laughs> Can you imagine the no, editing you, you of the da, 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 yeah. spinning around them and they're just sort of sitting there like, well, <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, uh, so you, you want something that's real difficult. It's, Permanent in terms of uh, they'll remember this, but also very much possible. They can actually win. They can succeed. And typically reflects uh, something horrible they've done in their life. Um, yeah. Um, poetic. It needs to be poetic. Usually, yeah. yeah what I'm... Some thematic tie to whatever the sin is that they've committed. Yeah, the reason why I'd have any investment in actually answering that question is because we've thought about it because we want the Soul films to be better. Yes, because there's 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 a Let's let's call it a fairly. What's a nice way to say that the Saw movies basically almost all suck? Um, they 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 put in a good F. They tried. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot shot. of them didn't though. No, like, yeah, just like I don't know, it's just a trap game. or whatever. It's just some blood. The the concept is virtually never even begun to get approached. Yeah. Well, I mean, six, right? It's a waste of a Except premise. Except for six, pretty yeah. much. That feels like the closest they got to doing something with the premise. Yeah. I was reading it stands out so much. Mm-hmm. Um...
Um, while y'all still have your Xmas avatars, watch Fat Man Free Fat Movies. Don't watch Silent Night 2023. It's a complete waste of time. Through the train. Yeah, we didn't like Silent Night as much as I think a lot of other people did. No. 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 Well, Violent, yeah, Violent Night was full, right? Night, yeah. Yeah. That's, it was kind of lame. There was like a few instances of it kind of getting close to being what we wanted it to be, but for the most part, it felt like it wasted its premise. Yep. It's like some um, kind of wastes its premise. It's annoying too, because I feel like everyone's on your side for that movie. Like Santa doing Pretty that not. and stuff. It's like, yes, let's go. That's great. But I feel like they did much <laughs> with it. Not but how does Chris Stuckman feel about interdimensional UFOs? I don't know. Does he feel about that? I wonder if we'll ever find out. Well, that everyone's particularly invested in it, but you know. Uh, Mullet, did you catch Echo Chamberlain mentioning how odd FNT felt to be on and called it being with a crowd of rowdy Americans? I giggled a lot. I mean, they would agree with that. <laughs> they feel like, of course, yeah. We're, I mean, rowdy American, is that even, is that redundant? I think so. Absurdities. We, oh, yeah, we're the rowdies. We love being rowdy. I mean, that's, Rowdy's the nicer one? version. They're, they're often known as obnoxious, Frankie. I don't know if you've ever heard about this. Oh my goodness. Uh, so harsh, but... That's rude. Well, every country has its positive and negative, right? Yeah, I guess so. On... Obnoxious? That's not even that bad compared to, I don't know, some countries. Yeah, that's like, on the negative traits, that's a mild negative trait to have, you know, compared to evil. <laughs> <For Yeah. instance. laughs> uh... Being Rowdy is, yeah, you're just a little... Right, yeah, rambunctious, a little noisy. I almost said a little nasal. It's not quite the same. Uh, EFAP movies for South Park and Team America? South Park movie? Yeah, I could see us doing that. And Team America. I have not yeah. seen uh, either of those, actually. Good lord. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen Team America? I feel like that's I amazing no. that you haven't seen that. In a, in a good way. We can... Yeah, that'll be really... You get to experience everything for the first time, and we yeah, get to watch. Yeah, we should try and find anyone we know who hasn't seen it, because <laughs> that'll make for a really funny... Because you have no idea. Like, it's weird that me and Fring don't reference Team America more, but, like, we both adore it. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was about to start referencing it, but I'm like, no, I, I suppose I should save those references. Yeah, I feel like Rags will be blown away by it, because especially with how everything's <laughs> I hear, gone. I see it referenced a fair amount, yeah. Some of the shit that's in that movie is, at this point, I think some people, you'd be like, how the fuck did this thing? <laughs> like, yeah, great question. I wish we had more of it. Uh, but yeah, we'll do that at some point for sure. Hopefully this episode has less Duma cringe and more Little Platoon wholesome. Hello, well, it around. will have less Duma cringe. I mean, and, and it did have lots of, uh, Little Platoon was, was in the whole thing, I think. I think. It's been a while. I think so. Even if this Whoever year was, was shit... there, they did a great job. Yeah. Even if this year was shit for films, please at least acknowledge the good films this year, the diamonds in the rough. I think we talked about good stuff and bad stuff. We try to. Definitely. Yeah. Um, are there or were there plans for an EFAP movies of the first Aquaman? I was really excited to see you guys riff on it and thought that much like the Batwoman Batwoman EFAPs, DCU might be on a hiatus. Well, yeah. Well, um, didn't, it, didn't it get lost? Or unfortunately, like that? Th this is the thing. There's so many projects that get fucked up along production lines. Um, Meme Repository got all kinds of issues happen with uh, the DC set of files. They're all in like one big folder, as far as I was aware. Um, but we've got yeah, because Bat Batwoman has been similarly like you know bumpy in production. Same thing goes for the War Arc. That went through all kinds of hell, getting ready to be released. And then uh, that's not including arcs that are currently being... Like, like Meme Repository is currently working on another one that was briefly in danger of being destroyed by awful circumstances involving uh, moving files in different places. And uh, when I moved my files from one PC to another, uh, several of them got lost through corruption, unfortunately. But there's... You know, I back up mostly everything, so... We don't get to save everything, but it, it doesn't mean that there would never be uh, coverage of different things in future. It just... For now means that what is out is there and that we're desperately trying to scrabble together everything or we'll scramble together everything we can for you guys to see but uh what would be missing um from our because we the dcu arc the almost DC? cut off once we did um it was like snyder he was like the finale well, what's interesting is like snyder cut almost snyder feels cut? like a bit of a culmination of that yeah. uh, of that era funnily enough 
But like, you know, if we were to return to it, we could now go back and do the ones we'd missed and um, like the Flash. We could do that as a new film. Uh, movie, well, so. like, yeah, like, and then uh, Aquaman like, uh, 2. Uh, <laughs> the end of the era. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it, that's definitely something we'll think about. But of course, we're also thinking about all the other ones we mentioned before, like other things that you know, Transformers or Michael Bay or Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. The Mummy. Or, yeah. yeah. So hard to say exactly what's going to happen, but uh, we we are aware of what fun things can happen if we uh, get to it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. My favorite movie Bring of twenty twenty. Fringy is kind of right in the sense that the Snyder Cut feels like the final boss of the DCEU in a way. Well, yeah, it's like everything afterwards was kind of just like... it Because everything after that was essentially it shuffling to its un, like unceremonious death. Like, that, you know, after that was when uh, Shazam and the Flash and everything was starting to happen. Good old Shazam. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that would have to be in there, too. Both Shazams, actually. Yeah, oh, you're God, right. That second was and terrible. Wow. <laughs> Memory hold that one. Well. Blue Beetle. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Came out. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, I was the only one that saw that, right? <laughs> I didn't see Blue Beetle. <laughs> um, I think you might have been the only person who saw that either. That was uh. Did yeah, there's maybe two that. or three other people in the world, but hey, you know what? Cool. Yeah. Uh. My. Favorite movie of 2023 was honestly Hunger Games SNS. It was so surprisingly good, more so than Saw X. Fun fact, the second weekend drop was 35%. Oh, that's low. Um, yeah, as far as I know, it did okay, right? Uh, it had legs. I think it had a it had a weaker opening, but it, it managed to maintain uh, an audience for a bit longer, so it ended up being a success. I know virtually nothing about Hunger Games. The occasional meme here and there that you just pick up through cultural... Diffusion. It's not almost, I think osmosis is specifically water, but you just sort of learn things. But apart from I watched that, the first I Hunger Games, uh, but I didn't watch the other ones. I've it's seen none cool of them. I think Royale. I don't know if I saw the first one. Battle Royale. It's, uh, that's the one. I mean, that wouldn't matter if it was good, right? Like, yeah, sure. I I just remember that the I think the takeaway from that Hunger Games movie, from what I remember of it, was like, eh. Eh, you know, that's yeah, basically it. It wasn't good enough good that it's worth seeing, and then for anybody who wanted to benefit from having experienced something like that as a story, they should go to Battle Royale. That's what, like, the notion was, essentially. I mean, if it was like, that was definitely, because I just, I never, I didn't read the books, I didn't care about, that was, man, that was the era of young adult, young adult novel yeah. adaptation, because there was that, there was the Divergent movies, Maze oh, Runner. Oh, Maze Runner, uh, yeah, you're Twilight. right. Twilight. Yeah. Twilight. Yeah. There's a lot. I think there's another one too that I'm forgetting about. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson was around about that time as well. Yeah, when they Percy made a, Jackson, yeah. a couple um, of movies there. We're still coming out with. I think at this point, let's see, the Harry Potter movies were done by this point, right? They just ended, but remember okay. that was when um the part one and part two things started happening. You remember? Because yeah. Harry Potter did mm. part one and two, and then I think Twilight ended with a part one and two. Hunger Games, I think it was Mockingjay Part 1 and 2 as well. And I think that uh, that Divergent series was going to do that, but then the Part 1 failed, so they just gave up. So it never ended. It just stopped. It didn't get a real finale. A wonderful era for cinema. Yeah. Didn't they make another Maze Runner, like, later on? Or... Was they made some... three of them. They made a trilogy of Maze Runner movies, but I don't remember anything other than that, you know? I don't remember. I, I never saw them. I don't know. I guess there's a maze. Yeah. There's a maze and, and like they robots, run through right? it. But, well, I know that it was like the first... It, it suffers from the problem that I think a lot of these stories have, which is they have like a big... They have like a big cell for a premise, right? Of like, oh, there's yeah, a bunch concept. of... You know, there's a bunch of kids and they're in a maze. And it's like they're unraveling the mystery of the maze, but then eventually that's done. Well, and you to need to now piper. move into the real, you know, the big story of like, ah, here's the evil si I'm pretty sure the bad guys were called Wicked. I think that was actually <laughs> their name. And oh. and then it's like, oh, well, you know, we gotta we gotta leave the maze, right? And we head out into the the post-apocalypse world of of the young adult, you know, science fiction 
tropes and, and it's like yeah then it starts to the world it's of the same with young games, adult right? science like, fiction tropes it, it's it was well, the same with hunger games right you have hunger games which like there's your pitch and then there's the next book it's like all right i guess what another hunger games <laughs> it's like yeah okay sure i guess yeah another hunger games it's like they struggle to justify continuing and they start to get really bloated like the scope gets crazy it, it goes from like a really localized idea for like a really good pitch for a story into now it's about the heroes group like a ragtag group of heroes going up against the evil society the evil Wicked. organization yeah <laughs> you will you will you will call them by their proper name it's very important Curse thee, sweet EFAP. I was having fun watching EFAP movies Saw X and I had to leave it for this. Somehow my decisions are your fault, dastardly fiends. Also, Happy New Year. Hi, Rags. Love the D&D. Oh, thank you. I'm very glad you're enjoying it. We've been known to be a bit dastardly. Yeah. Drinker, have you... I like you... to dabble. Have you ever gone Walker Blue Label? I'm afraid we can't answer Johnny that. Johnny Walker Blue Label? Yeah, I'm not a... I'm sure I'm he probably... A... He's drank everything, so yes. I'm not <laughs> a drinking man. Uh, Michael J. Fox walks into an ice cream parlor. The proprietor says, Wow, Marty McFly in the flesh. Two scoops on the house. What would you like? And Michael J. Fox thinks for a second and says, You know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to drop it anyway. I don't think that's what he'd say. No, probably not. Uh. The man is a condition. He does. I need to see the, um, the documentary uh, came out about it recently, right? Yeah. I want to say that too. Uh, December 31st is my birthday. Cheers. Thanks for EFAPPING. No problemo. Hi, Rags. Hi, Fringy. Hi, Marvel. Uh, Hi, did we, Marvel in the room with us did we right have now? Marvel as a guest? I don't remember. <laughs> Marvel in the room with us. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for the great content this year and for the hard work, especially recently. Here's all the support I can muster. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Happy 2024. P.S. I'm hyped for Joker 2. I Likewise. think I will be when I step yeah. into the theater. I'll probably be like, this is going to be good, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Hey, I hope it's good. I fucking That's really hope it's good. Be sad if it's not good. Mm-hmm. Though I think no matter what it is, the discourse on it is going to be frazzled, like Probably. all over the place. I mean, the discourse on the first one was like yeah. not good. Yeah, we had like so many factions at the same time, right? Of um, the whether or not you enjoyed it crowds were not the only people discussing that movie. It was the this film will cause yeah, well, someone to shoot someone crowds. It. The yeah. people thinking it's a rip off of Taxi Driver crowds. The people who are like this should never be a Joker film crowd. Like we're, and then people fighting over the nature of like comic book movies and whether it should yeah. be tying into the cinematic universe crowds. Yeah, the, and that'll all happen again, I guess. Or oh, something different this time, but like similar. I don't know. Well, yeah, the circumstances are a bit different. Um, I guess it's not as much of an underdog now uh, compared to compared to when it was coming out. But I mean, it still feels like Todd Phillips has uh, kind of still. It you know, people still is like you still got to prove yourself. You know. Yeah. Like, it's not enough that he made that film. He's still got to earn his cred as a filmmaker. Yeah, of course. There was the, the Todd Phillips shouldn't be taken seriously crowd, or, or at least way of thinking. So, um, all that combined, you know, what's going to happen this time? Because Joker 1, I, I think, is it settled science now that Joker 1 was a fucking excellent movie? Uh, I hope so. I think people, I think, sorry. I think people accept that it's a good film. Hope so. Which it is. And we'll see about the fate of the second of the Jokers. Did we ever do? We didn't do a Joker breakdown, did we? We just did uh, response no, videos and stuff. We did response videos. On it. I don't think we did a breakdown. Mm -hmm. Right. Because um, I can't see us doing one for Joker two. We might. It's just going to be weird, right? If it's a lot of songs in it. Mm. Yeah. It was a song, and I thought it was good. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring on uh, Sideways, the the YouTuber who can. Mm. Do musical analysis, song analysis. Tell us all about the choices. We'll bring on Todd Phillips too. Why not? And uh, <laughs> maybe grab Scorsese, ask his opinions on it, see if he thinks it's uh, really good or not. You know, double feature. It's or or a quadruple. So it's Could you imagine Joker, how fucking <laughs> how bad the entire internet would be if he just like 
phoned me up and was like, can I come on an episode? I just want to talk a bit about, uh, you know, my, my career and, uh, and specifically about Joker. And he just comes on and just talks about all of it. Be yeah. so watching, watching podcast for the last four years. And you know, I was watching EFAP and it helped me write the script for Joker too, oh, which God. is now presently. Oh, <laughs> that would be the, the, the final damage. Which is presently nominated for an Academy Award for Best Screenplay. And I really owe that to Marlo <laughs> Ray. I owe that to <laughs> EFAP. <laughs> It'd be so fucking hilarious. That would be funny. We, if he said that, we would just be like, "Why? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Is this a meme? Is this a bit? Why are you doing this to us, Marty?" <laughs> uh, Happy New Year to all you lovely massives! Thank you. Happy New Year to yourself. Yeah, cheers. Uh, my dyslexia kicked in hard when I read his promo code. I read it as "Fat Stuckman." Lol. Oh, I don't. What was it? Uh. I don't know, get stuckmanized. Something I don't like know, that, something maybe, like yeah. that. Uh, Happy New Year, you massives. Happy New Year. Uh, Rip Tom Wilkinson, one of the great character actors, such memorable roles in Batman Begins, Michael Clayton, Cassandra's Dream, Ghost Rider, Rock and Roller, many more. Yep. It was always know, awesome good. to see in a movie. He was never disappointed. Uh, shame, but, you know, the many great roles added a lot to the world. Uh, did Rags have a stroke this stream? Also, hi, Rags. I might have, but I feel okay now. Good. That's good. Hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, Google says, Factor 75's name stands for the philosophy that 75% of fitness results in everyday performance derive from diet. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I thought he was going to talk about the 80-20 principle or something. You never know what's going to happen in these. 80% of success is showing up 27% of the time. Well, you know, you, right? you're getting close. You were kind of closest. To, it's, it's the idea that like 80% of the results uh, stems from 20% of the input. Something along those lines. And then you could extrapolate that out uh, across a variety of different activities, fields, subjects that like 20% of the work accounts for, like, 80% of the rewards. Hmm. I think it's generally accepted to have a lot of truth to it, the 80-20 principle. Uh, behold my awesome milestone. Behold, I'm starting to realize that you say that every time. I'm on Yeah, well, he's writing. just, he's really enamored with his, every time, it's, it's awe-inspiring. I mean, if ever you want to ask a question, we will answer it. Just letting you know. That's right. You can do whatever you want. We're all about freedom here. This is the mm -hmm. freedom podcast. Yeah. This is the true American podcast for red-blooded American Every frame of libertarian or something. Well, no, every, every frame every of patriot. Every freedom a pause to appreciate freedom. Every freedom, freedom. a patriot. Ah, oh, right. was, every freedom a patriot. And what, what it means, every time we pause, a, a bald eagle goes, ah! And flies past on the screen. Yeah. EFAP apps actually stands for Equality Freedom Amendment President. <laughs> it really That's rolls off EFAP. the tongue. It really does, which is why we shorten it to EFAP almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. uh, America. 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 Do -do 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 America. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Coming again to save the motherfucking day, yeah. Beautiful. I was so hysterical during your Home Alone 2 video that I almost died of asphyxiation. Definitely an EFAP movies for the oh ages. My God. Also oh high my rags. Goodness. Hi, hey there. How it was are you fun doing? to watch. I don't mean to laugh. Like that's that's scary. That wouldn't so, so like good. it's a good one. It didn't strike me as like one of the crazy funniest ones, you know. But <laughs> it's, it's just good. the fucking it's the compilations of seeing the two actors get abuse that's what it is yeah it's so funny and it uh, really is abuse at the expense of other people that we enjoy it almost true. makes me it's curious Schadenfreude of the movie to design a home alone film because of the fact that it's like i got an idea for 10 percent of it i don't know what the fuck the rest of it is don't worry <laughs> yeah, people that, will that, only remember <laughs> the last 10 minutes that is kind of a funny aspect of home alone and home alone 2 is is uh but i guess that's kind of the, what happened right with like home alone 2 is that it was a lot harder for them to yeah, you know, make use of that time. It's like we got it. 
If the, doesn't it feel like such a 90s meme that like it's they're lost in the big apple you know like they're yeah. on an adventure in the big city that that yeah. was always the idea of getting on. lost in a city it's a strange it's but a it's strange not, thing especially to a modern a modern person the idea that you could get lost in a city but it's always new york it's never like they get lost in chicago or they get lost in la oh, <laughs> well i guess it should make for an them. interesting home alone movie and everything feels like it, depressing maybe is the wrong word but i don't know just like like oh man we could get lost in a city and go on all kinds of things it's like i got my phone i know where we are that's the, well yeah it, the, like, the, the guns the and phones man guns the and phones ruin world everything world. <laughs> you have to account for guns and phones if that's you don't account you for guns to... and phones you have to write better that's why you either have to set it you have to set it if you want to avoid all those problems you got to set it in like you know 1864 or something yeah, there needs to be a time, uh, like, you can get it at a lot of parts of the world, late 90s, you could go that far. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty much. Or something like that. But, but... but once you get to the 2000s, like, well, now you got internet, which, uh, just, that's, that's a, that changes everything. Guns and phones. Hello, lads. Just a big Hi. thank you for all your stuff. It's helped me get through a breakdown I had this year. After therapy, I'm feeling the best I have felt in a few years. So thanks again. Oh, Hi, great. Rags. Hello there. Glad you're, Glad you're feeling better, really well. That's awesome. Yeah, good to hear. Hope you're still doing well, if you're hearing this mm -hmm. much later. But uh, we always appreciate hearing I'm stuff happy like to that. provide levity and entertainment. Yeah. Back in time to say Happy New Year's, lads, and to maybe check out the Fear Hole episode of Rick and Morty. It was neat. Happy Fleems. Is Fear that like hole. a newer episode of... Considering Cause... that's not triggering a single memory at all, I it's probably a new Fear one. Hole. Yeah. yeah. That seems like a show that you just don't ever hear about anymore. It just completely... I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if I've ever had my investment in a, in a show get destroyed that quickly. Well, it's not the number one for me on that front. I assume you know what, what that would be. Uh, oh. Uh, would it be Game of Thrones? Um, Pretty much, even though it's... It, Game of Thrones did both, right? It was like a gradual decline, but then the final season annihilated yeah. everything. Um, well, and, and the it, Game of Thrones is an interesting one to point to because culturally that seems to have happened for basically everybody who watched it it's like it went from being the biggest thing in the world to people don't talk about game of thrones anymore mm -hmm. which is so surreal people still talk yeah, about for Breaking basically Bad. a decade it was like this juggernaut of popular culture and then Genuinely, yeah. uh, a lot to do with it will be like the discussion of certain character arcs doesn't work anymore because of how they yeah. end meanwhile people can still talk about breaking bad you know over a decade after the finale ed yeah. That's still something you can talk about. Breaking Bad has endured in the way that good shows tend to. Yeah, it, people talk about it. People reference it. People know the actors. It got its own, like, spin-off, quote-unquote spin-off, you know, kind of show. Kept going. Well, and, like, uh, the memes from Breaking Bad are usually celebratory, while the only ones that make it <laughs> Game of Thrones yeah. are oftentimes the ones like uh, Danny Forgot, the Iron Fleet, which... Why did you say that? Like, why would you have? It was like that? the clearest case uh, you can make for why your ending matters so fucking much. If you it if is. you fuck up the ending, that can ruin everything. It should be studied in a laboratory as Probably. an example for everyone to be like, "This is how you ruin ten years of cultural dominance." Yeah. Hey, they're trying to claw it back with House of the Dragon. We'll see how they do. You know, they so are. far they're doing a good job, but clearly. There is a, you know, this, this year is, this is potentially the year of like broken hearts with all of these second seasons and things coming up. We have so much <laughs> high expectations. Well, I think smiling if, friends, I think it's safe to say that smiling friends will uh, succeed. I, I don't think, see I any think we're yeah, for reason to be worried smiling about smiling friends. friends. But yeah, House of the Dragon, uh, Arcane season two, you know, there's a lot of things where it's like, okay, come on guys, please, please. It would be nice if you didn't fuck it up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it'll probably just be the one episode and then we'll feel comfortable with both of them. Uh, probably. As as I, I would say um, it's, it's funny because if out of those three, if someone asked me, what are you the most optimistic for? I, I think people would be like, what's well, arcane, right? But I'd be like, it's probably Smiling Friends because I'm like 100% confident I'm going to enjoy Smiling Friends. 
like I'm 100% confident basically that I'm going to watch that second season and really enjoy it uh compared to Arcane where it's like I'm at a, like a 95% confident I'm going to love it you know and I wonder <laughs> and how much of that dragon. we'll see how much of that's uh is the, of the like of 95% how much of that 5% is down to will the studio just let them do their thing or will they try and push it or they try and speed it um, up because of its success I don't know if it's that. I think it's just like a five percent chance of it. What what they're creating is very ambitious. Yeah, it's, it's very ambitious and it's difficult yeah. to achieve. Uh, where a smiling friends needs to achieve on an episode by episode basis of having good comedy, um, which which is funny. I don't think that's easy at all. Um, but I'm I'm more optimistic that sm that smiling friends season two is just going to be really funny. And if anything, it might have a lot of the benefits that they have more money to play around with now, so they might be in a better position to mess around with format. Like to, you know, like kind of like what we saw in the, with the experimentation Wibbly. of like 3D animation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that, where, whereas with Arcane, it's like, I'm pretty, especially after watching the behind the scenes of them talking about the thought processes behind yes. creating it. Um, that's, that's made me a lot more optimistic for season two. It was uh, crazy, you fucking, uh, Sort of encouraging was the fact that they'd had a story and they scrapped it like that they felt yeah. like the story wasn't good enough yeah hearing something like that is like oh damn that's so that's so reassuring it's like what that we failed it's like that you thought it wasn't good enough and you needed to try again like that's awesome yeah that's such a great attitude to have um and then there's the fact that it seems pretty clear that they that they they knew where they were going even by the end of season one I don't think it's a matter of they're like gonna have to be like, okay, shit, how do we make this story keep going? It's like a story that necessarily is gonna have multiple seasons that I think they have a plan for, which makes me, you know, feel more at ease too. And House of the Dragon, I guess I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Like, I, I guess that's the one where I'm the most worried, but I'm still expecting it's gonna be good. Well, I feel like I would put the most worry on it because of the episode nine of the first season, right? We've seen them fail; that, they can fuck oh, up. Yeah, that's true. Whereas, yeah, whereas there is no failure in Arcane or Smiling Friends. <laughs> there's what one could call, like, you know, mistakes or whatever, but I, I don't see... There's no single well, not, episode no of Arcane. Well, no bad episodes. Yeah, yeah, and there's no, no character episodes. arc that's, like, destroyed or anything. There was... They did really well with As opposed Ability. to What's-Her-Name, who was ruined uh, in House of the Dragon. Oh, Rhaenys, yeah. None of us will ever like yeah. Rhaenys ever again. That's never gonna happen. Exactly. Which sucks, because uh, the actress seems pretty solid, and the character was really interesting. So, you know... Until she burst through the floor and then flew away. Yeah. Well, and uh, the whole, like, I don't want to kill a mother or something. She's like, how many mothers do you yeah, think are like, in the crowd, lady? And their kids. I don't, even, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where to begin. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is so annoying. But she'll be back. Is there any other season twos that, we're, uh, that are coming out this year? Those are the three that I'm thinking about. Yeah, I can't Three think of any either, yeah. but I feel like there might be one more. Yeah, maybe. Well, there probably is. It's just some show we don't care about, maybe. <laughs> some show is on <laughs> season two. Of, so, is, uh, maybe they'll make a, a spin off of that Young Sheldon show. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And that maybe is in season two. Who knows? Chris Duckman has devolved into Chris GPT. Oh, hey, we'll Ooh. see. Maybe he's packing all of his creativity into the movie. Into the film, yeah, maybe. Happy new flames, Moller and gang. Ever thought of having Chris, Lyle, and Toma on EFAP? Uh, only plays never fails to make me laugh. We would have them on in an instant uh, if they yeah. wanted to. Happy to. The script is definitely AI, but is Chris himself AI? Listen to his intonation, observe his movements, or lack thereof. This is an inhuman review. Uh, you know, being careful. He doesn't want to upset. He he recognizes the creators of um, Madam Web as artists. Oh, that's right. He wants to be clear that uh, it's a bit rude to be rude to them. Hey, massives! I read the Lords of Discipline based on your recommendation, Rags, and I really enjoyed it. Who's your favorite character? Mine is probably Dante Pignetti. Also, play Little yeah. Nightmares. All right. Uh, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've read it. I read that back in, like, high school. I just don't remember a lot of specifics, names, things of that nature. I remember, like, uh, plot points, elements, uh, but I, I just don't remember it in that much detail at this point. 
but I'm very glad that you liked it. I know that I enjoyed it uh, immensely. I did a lot of reading in high school. Um, up there, there is so much room where babies burp and flowers bloom. Tomorrow night is something soon. This is where I will be going soon. Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. <laughs> Yeah, because they've written out... It's funny, they've gobbled it a little bit. Everyone dreams I can dream too up there, but where the skies are ocean blue, could be safe and live without a care up there. It's all That's all Satan's lyrics, right? Oh, uh, well, I was... I was Because uh, Satan has a portion of his song in Low Resistance, which is probably my favorite song in the movie, because the best thing you can do in a musical is have all of the songs meld together. That's like that's like my favorite thing in a musical is when a whole bunch of disparate songs are melded together seamlessly. I love it. It's so good. Well, they got to do that in Joker too now, otherwise they failed. You know? Uh, they don't have to do it. Uh, I mean, it's it's not <laughs> something that like lots of musicals do. It's just that I really, I really like it when uh when that happens in, in a musical. It, it feels like uh it feels like the 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 biggest flex that you can do in a musical. Is I'm so good at songwriting that I can blend all of these disparate songs together in a way that's really coherent. It, it always just feels like a really climactic because I believe that's the last song in the South Park movie, except for the like the reprise of the at the end of the film. I think, yeah, I think that's the last song in the movie. I am currently lubing mechanical keyboard switches. Oh, good huh. for you. Great. Hope it all works out. Uh, Merry Crombus and Happy New Year, you dumbos. I had a lot of fun this year. Hope the next brings even more. Also, where's Duma? Also, also, play DDLC. I'm afraid no Duma for that new year. No Duma. No. <laughs> Maybe next year. Who knows? Miles Morales Across the Spider-Verse. We haven't talked about that much at all, actually. I don't think even in the, in the year in review, right? Uh, I think it got mentioned, right? It must have. Mentioned. It was an important movie last year, yeah. Yeah. But hey, we'll see when that second part is coming out. Yeah. I think Maybe people it's... might have to wait a while for that. Go um, off the trilogy. Uh, yes. Please watch good old Grace's top DCU movies of all time. Ooh. <laughs> that could be really funny. Does she do... Oh, so it's, yeah, DCU specifically. Okay. Maybe ranking the DCU movies, yeah. Interesting to see what she would... Uh, yeah. All right, well, we'll consider that. Review speedrunning. You mean, Review like, in general? Review speedrunning. Okay. <laughs> Rags, roll a six. Okay, give me a second. Oh, all right, let me... I got a bag of dice over here. Here we go. Okay, let me get a. I get. Can you? You can hear the the boys in here. Uh, let's see. Got to find a sixer. Go. Uh, we gonna here. All right, here's one. Here's one. It's got numbers instead of the dots, which you know. All right. Three. Three. One. Three. Four. Four. Five. Two. Five, one, four. Okay, I'm trying. Statistically, you will hit a six. There Here we go. go. I got a six. You know what I don't like about this particular one that I pulled out is that it's a six-sided die, but it has numbers instead of the dots. Um, the six has a line underneath it to let you know that it's not a nine. Well, I guess some people make that mistake. All right, yeah. Uh, always happy to roll uh, a six-sided die. Did you know that there's um there's a f I've got a four-sided die in here. I got four-sided die in here. I didn't know that you had a four-sided one. Um, but I know that they wait. What wait a four? No, I actually. What is it? A four-sided die. So, I guess it's not technically four-sided. It depends. Is on it like a triangle? It, what? It is a it is a triangular pyramid. And oh, I don't know why it's the a faces... triangle. That's, of course, it's a pyramid. Yeah, 3D object. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, it is a triangle from the side, I guess. But yeah, it's it's a triangular pyramid. And instead of, unlike all of the other dice, instead of a um, instead of the numbers being on the faces, 
It's the points that are the numbers. So there's always a point. Oh, so that's I how you see. do. That's how you okay. do a D4, a D4 dice. But as far as I know, it's the only one. There are D2s, I think. Um, uh, two-sided dice, but they're they're like a weird flumpy shape. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me get you a picture of it. Copy image. Paste image. I don't have any of these, but that's a two-sided dice. Huh. So it has a one and a two value. Interesting. It is interesting. I must say, this Stuckman guy is one of the most reviewers of all time. I would almost feel offended to call him a crispy critter. Yeah, not as crispy as your uh, regular critters, but you know. Something. The door won and the foot broke. Hail the six. Hail the six? Not sure what that means, but alright. Mola, be honest, are you into UFOs now? I mean, I feel like UFOs are cool. UFOs are... Uh, well, may, well, I don't know. But they might be cool. I'm not sure. I, I think it's because I don't know what they are. Or maybe not knowing what they are is what makes them cool. So when you do identify a UFO, maybe it becomes far less interesting. There you go. Is it Killian Murphy or Silly Ann Murphy? I think we'll go with Killian. Let's no. how people describe him. He's so silly and Murphy. Hmm. He's full of Murph. Murph! 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 You all just can't handle it. Stuckman has a balanced media diet than all of you combined. They put a little cap of face. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are people who, uh, I'm sure there are people who think that. I mean... I guess so. It's, uh, is it better to consume all kinds of a art form when you don't understand it? I was about to say, if you're consuming a whole bunch of art forms, but like none of it's being absorbed, then that's not particularly meaningful. Like somebody who's only watched one movie but could talk about that movie in exhaustive detail compared to somebody who's watched a thousand movies, but all they could say is, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I liked it. I uh, didn't like that one so much. I mean... You know, it's kind yeah. of kind of worth thinking about, isn't it? Insert slow mo soy face. Um, certainly got him. In robotic voice, Grandpa, I want you to watch this Japanese anime about basketball. Oh yeah, he uh, he apparently did a separate video for that though, so maybe that one is good. You know, like. Has... Maybe, but I mean, you figure that for the, you know, recap of the best movies of the year that you would be providing more substantive <sighs> recaps. So... You'd certainly think. God, he's just empty. Must feel good to be in. Oh, you mean like in Hollywood somewhat? I mean, he's he's he might make it a little further, but I just don't imagine we're going to see him being able to uh, attach his name to like anything significant in terms of like budget uh, and studio surprised. not not like in terms of a creative project he might very well be related to an awesome film someday who knows yeah um happy new year's fappers a riddle for the gang i am eight by eleven long have pedals but no gas yet my actions produce reactions what am i Right, say that one more time, or copy and paste it, just so I could kind of give it a read and... Sure. I am 8 by 11 long, have pedals but no gas, get my actions, produce reactions. What am I? Uh, is it like a, a bike? Bikes have pedals and they don't have uh, petrol. What is pedals but no gas? Oh, what is 8 by 11? Like, what, what is the unit of measurement What about a there? drum? Right, a drum set? Oh, yeah, like a... Yeah, yeah, that's... Because they've got pedals There's like a it was pedal a hi-hat or a... Yeah. 8 by 11 long. What is 8 by 11? What is that? What's the unit of measurement? Height width? Yeah, but what's the unit of measurement? Is it inches? Is it feet? Is it meters? What is it? We might just have to work with that. Because in the absence in of that... Of dimension... <laughs> 
I don't know. That's useless information. I think. I, I don't think it's useless at all because it gives you like the the like the the ratio, relative. Yeah, the the relative. Yeah. You you basically have the relative shape of uh, it. You just don't know how big it or small it is. Uh, I'll, I'll go for. A, I'll say it's a bike. Eight by eleven. Unless unless eight by eleven doesn't have. Maybe that's not dimensions. Maybe that's well, sorry, reference. Eight by to eleven long. Eighty eight. I'm eighty eight long. Have pedals but no gas. You have actions produce reactions. I'll just go with a bike. That's that's my answer. Final answer locked in. I have yeah, no I idea. What? No what do you mean idea. you don't know? Well, wait, you have to know. Nope. <laughs> what? Is there no answer what? attached to the message? Nope. Oh, oh whatever. All right. Well. well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the good of that? I, was, I mean, I'm like. I'm... I, I I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Like I'm invested. I'm curious. Well, I mean, we could try Google it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Eight by eleven. Long have pedal. Have pedals, but no gas. I'm eight by eleven long. Button. I'm eight. I have long. I have pedals, but no gas. I I I don't. Yeah. Is is the next super chat the answer or? No. I I don't know. All right. I have do a, not know. Have a very happy new year, you guys. Thank you. You too. Uh, low energy reviews are distasteful to me. They should be. If you're yeah. going to review something, then you need to have... You need to have excitement. You need to be thrilled. Happy New Year, EFAP. Been watching since around EFAP 10. You guys should watch Alice in Borderland. It has two seasons, which tells a great story with great characters. Also shows that Hollywood has forgotten how to write shows. I think Az likes Alice in Borderland. I've not seen it. Did you say Alice in Borderland? Yep. Alice in Borderland? I have no idea what this is. A Alice show on Netflix, I think. Alice in Borderland. This is a obsessed gamer Arisu suddenly finds himself in a strange, emptied-out version of Tokyo in which he and his friends must compete in dangerous games in order to survive. I've, yeah, I've never heard of it. This came out in December of 2020. Mm -hmm. Directed by Shinsuke Sato. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of this. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning had enough word of mouth to make Biden consider the implications of AI. What are you talking about? I mean, it didn't have enough word of mouth to make it a profitable film, by the way. I was going to say, what? Also, that was the film that, that made him consider he, AI? What would that be word of mouth? Couldn't it just be like, oh yeah, I'll watch the new Mission Impossible, me, Joe Biden, then he went and saw it and went, And like, mm, the AI in that AI film is silly and stupid. It's silly and stupid, yeah. I don't feel like surely he would have had a conversation about it with somebody at some point, right? Like, before that film came out. And it doesn't, yeah, like, th the president's talking about the film, but yet it failed. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. even know what we're oh, supposed you know, to do with that. Right yeah, checkmate. Well, to checkmate be clear, he went, he went to go see the film, and then by the time he went to go sh to talk about it, he completely forgot about the entire event. Couldn't remember the name or what happened, and then he just started randomly describing um, the quiet man. Well, maybe, like, he lost all of his memory down to when he'd first seen Blade Runner in theaters and was thinking about that. Oh, um, yeah, that'd be funny if he starts describing and Blade people were like, Runner. oh, you must be talking about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, and then he just looks at them and says, yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's right, that's the film. The one. Boy, I, that's a great one. Great flim. I wish you the best of luck, future of Mission Impossible, but my god, that film was so shit. Oh, Terrible. very, very bad. Terrible. What happened? What happened was, was it was so a fluke. Confused. I don't know. That's it. It was a fluke. Shelby I guess it was. Fallout was a fluke. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, apparently so. Um, Shelby Oaks, directed by new director Chris Duckman, is a 2000... Oh, <laughs> 2003 horror movie. It made me... F oh, that's... That's so fucking tempting to do. Well, to do a review of the, the film, Chris Duckman review of Shelby Stuckman, Oaks. Yeah. Directed by Chris Duckman. <laughs> the yeah. 2023 horror movie that made me feel things and had good cinema. It had words and dialogue and characters and oh, actors portraying that's, those that's characters. That's going to be impossible to resist. Shelby <laughs> 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 Oaks. Created by up and coming director Chris Stuckman. This stream is good. I really like it. Mola Hot. Oh, thank you. Glad you enjoy it. Uh, all the best for the new year. May the long be with you. Mola Rags Laugh. Yes, that's another emote. Rags <laughs> Laughing. Having a laughter ring. Oh, boy. I sure do love laughing. Will it's like be the song covering... from Mary Poppins. Yes. Um, yeah. They said, well, EFAF. What is EFAF? What am I supposed to make of this nonsense? Every frame a frame? Every... It's not wrong. Guess so. Uh, EFAF. Will EFAF be covering Drinker's movies? I think they, they mean the new one that's coming out. And probably not. It's probably the biggest conceivable uh, conflict of interest you could even imagine. So mm. I, I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you know, wish him absolutely the best of luck. But we've we've kind of we covered this like years ago. It just doesn't come up very often. But not really going to be reviewing Piers' work ever. Um, probably to the point that if we befriended this, this is totally within the realm of possibility. By the way, if we befriended Ryan Johnson and uh, talked to him about all of his work, and you know, he came on EFAP semi regularly. And, you know, he became the fourth host. Uh, probably would stop reviewing his films. <laughs> yeah, he's just on you know, an episode like. And uh, by the way, guys, my new, my, the new Knives Out film is coming out. It's Dude, like, that would oh, be so yeah. funny. It's like, oh, I've got my you know TFA Pop Fives on his way out. Freaky's talking about a particular video he's released in Rags Two, and they were like, "You up to anything, Ryan?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, popping out uh, <laughs> Knives Out Three. It's just you can check it out on Netflix." It's like, "Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. That's neat." Uh, what about next week? <laughs> you doing anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, what I meant was RLM don't want to get criticized so they don't try. They'd rather be kings of their little hill. <clears throat> um, you could have a Is more... Is that, like, the reason that they gave for why they don't want to do, like, other stuff? Another movie? I don't know if this relates to them doing movies or if it relates to, um, the nature of them not interacting with very many people online. Oh, um, I see. In either case... You know, there's positive spins of both of them. Uh, for the first being the the foray into movie making being a failure, so to speak. Like they could literally feel they're just not right for the job, um, which is interesting as a as a thing of like they have the capacity and they've shown the willingness. They've made several movies uh, in their lifetimes, but that they're not willing to continue after the, you know discovering the difficulty of achieving it. But simultaneously, will make many many you know. Uh, videos talking about how it should be done, uh, at least in the yeah. you know some of the execution of it, which is really interesting. I've always felt like they absolutely have the potential to make something great, uh, either comedy or drama. I feel like they have enough of an understanding and care about cinema to do so. I, you know, Jay Bauman in in several conversations has shown a really great and like passionate understanding of different things related to filmmaking, and they're both passionate editors. Like I just feel like the it could have been something there, but who am I to tell people like that, you know, what art I think they should be creating in the same vein? I want another Team America, but I'm never going to get it. Um, and that's okay, I suppose. Uh, you know, I, I'd be like, you'd be so worth it, guys. This is the amount of things you could do. And they'd probably look at me like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, yeah, I know. That's fair. <laughs> like, I'll just go back to my hole. So in the same way, you know, I, I think they, they could pull it off, but um, they just absolutely don't want to. And they've talked about how hellish it was making Space Cop, so... Right. You know, the, so I guess what I'm getting at is, like, that's a fair angle, could totally have happened, can be reasonable. There's no reason to look into that any way of, like, they don't want to be embarrassed or humiliated ever ridiculed. again. Yeah. Just a matter of whether or not you actually want to do those things. And then the other one being the interacting with people... 
I mean, when you have a tight knit group of friends that are reliable and not going to backstab you at any point or humiliate you or do anything that take advantage of you, it is tempting to probably lock yourself up a bit. Mm. Uh, and you know, I because uh, I think I said when covering when we were covering the, the Obi One stuff. Uh, we were talking about... We were trying to figure out why the fuck they said what they said about that show. Was, do you remember they were, they were quite positive about it? Yes, and it was bizarre. Just it was strange. incredibly bizarre because you'd expect them, uh, among many, to see right through it as, like, awful shit. Um, but it came across... I think I made the point that, like, it, it felt like they needed to... That there was two clear teams that were happening. The, like, pro-Disney and anti-Disney crowds having their fight. And they didn't want to be a part of either of them. Like they, they wanted to be above that, the, like all of it, and have a unique take. But like the, the way they talked about the Obi Wan show was fucking baffling. And so I, like I made the point of how I felt like they were trying to find a unique perspective while also rationalizing the fact that they did enjoy that show. Um, which is crazy. I don't know if uh, Rags, you said you saw it, right? Their, their review of Andor is like they spend the whole thing talking about all the characters. And it's like, yeah, it's weird. It was like, uh, <laughs> like I don't want to say too uncharacteristic, but it kind of was strange. Like I was surprised, especially when you hear them talk about like these are the guys who talked about Kenobi. Yeah, and here they are talking about Andor, but like a good, meaningful, interesting. Did Kenobi even come up in that review? Video? Did who? Did Kenobi come up in that video? I can't remember. I don't think it did. Because like I don't believe for a fucking second that any of them will remember Obi Wan Kenobi the TV show ever again. I don't think anybody will, other than wow, that was a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, like that one. That one's fascinating. It is just accepted as garbage. Um, like nobody's out defending that show. No, it's kind of in the same realm as uh, like Book of Boba Fett, of just like it's and and Mando season well, three um, right away. Did we point it out in the the acolytes trailer where it says from the people who made that it lists Andor, Ahsoka, and Mandalorian. Yes, that felt like, funny. That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> especially when, like, when when you say from the people who made it, it's like, what people want to hear when they hear that is, like, the writers and the directors, not, well, it's the same studio, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like it, it, it's, that's the kind of connection, right? It, it's, because it's interesting, when Pixar used to say, like, from the people who made this film, it's like, yeah, they're talking about the creative team that made that film, not just that it's Pixar. Because that's what you want to hear. It's like, yeah, it was the same creative voices on that one. Uh, rather than, well, we are Lucasfilm, so, you know, we had a hand in the Mandalorian, I guess. Well, what did you say like, from the people who made Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and Andor? You're like, wait a minute. What the fuck? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Andor, excuse me. Click <laughs> uh, right here and get East Makerized. East Makerized. Guess, well, there was a, uh, there was an ad for a like a food thing, right? Well, I was just gonna say the taste maker. That's kind of what Chris Duckman is, right? In a, in a in a sense, that's what a Critical Drinker is as well. Well, like uh, and and sort of giving a sense of like what uh what it what is good. What's what's the what's the taste of the audience? Yeah, the movie. not just yeah. expressing how they feel, but also kind of setting the uh, expectations for what a lot of people feel. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I mean, that's what Roger Ebert did, like, regardless of whether you think you did a good or bad job at it. Yeah. Um, should have waited till 2999 till he published? Not sure what that relates to. It must have been something we were discussing at some time. Hmm. A whole page of clip art per film is the print equivalent of a seven-second title card with the same blaring music. Uh, oh yeah, right. The blam, 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 blam that he did for every single, uh, every single film. You oh remember? fuck yeah! Now I remember. Yeah, I <laughs> started to drive us nuts. It was so only because bad. of the ratio of that to actual like stuff happening in the video is crazy. I think it's just an element of how undynamic it is as well. A still frame of the film with a number attached to it, just still. With the music playing, it's like, damn, this is so undynamic. I don't know what it is. It's just like, I hate this. 
Uh, more, the first movie RLM ever made was called The Recovered. It was a horror movie, and if I remember correctly, it wasn't very good. Maybe they could do horror now, but I think their experience spoiled their taste for it. They've made a few movies. They made, um, like, a, their own version of, like, the Critters film. They had, like, a bunch of monsters that ate people. I forget that what that one was called. But I know that Pains? Space Cop, particularly, was one they put a lot of effort into, and... It just, like, it was a nightmare to do it, everything went wrong, and it didn't do particularly well, and it wasn't particularly good. So, it was, like, that's not going to encourage you to continue. Which is funny, because I, I mentioned, um, you know, Team America making a sequel, and they don't want to, and it's like, yeah, that that had similar things of nightmare to make. It was you know. incredibly difficult to make, down to the wire, like, they barely got it finished in time for release. Everything went wrong. Um to the point that they don't want to make any movies anymore, I don't think. That's the reason why they haven't made any more movies. Um, and yeah, that's what I was going to say, was even even if Space Cop had been amazing and been super well received, no guarantee that they would have continued. Well, yeah, I mean, if you didn't have fun doing it, like, that's going to be a big deterrent for uh, making more films. Yeah. Um, and like yeah. I said, I'm inclined to believe from everything I've heard them talk about over the years that they would have some good ideas that relate to... Did, uh, Rags, did you see the video about their movie version of Pong? No. Sounded I don't know anything funny about as it. fuck and super, like, potentially cool, especially if you get the character right. right. But they basically, it, they were like, you know, they were conceptualizing it as like an 80s movie where a bunch of kids are in a arcade and they get it gets hit with lightning and they all get sucked into the Pong game. Yeah. Um, and like, it's, it's super atmospheric and they're walking around this big black sort of space, but in the distance you can kind of make out like a white block. And then the actual ball in the Pong game is moving around the board. And like there's, you know, within the first 10 minutes of them discussing everything, this big horrifying reveal is it just slaps right past and just kills one of the characters, splatters them into flesh. And, uh, they all have it's to deal with. It's interesting if you're saying this. I'm thinking of an entirely different kind of Pong movie. Well, this is their Pong, Pong? movie. The, it, was, they, it was animated as well. I'd recommend checking it out. It's funny. Oh, but okay. Right. They go further and further, I... and they try to start going to more absurd and funny shit, which uh, it's, it's rather yeah, entertaining. Yeah, yeah, that could be fun. I would, uh, if I got told you're doing a Pong movie, I think I'd want to make like a uh, kind of like an 80s, 90s style sports movie where like one Pong is the underdog Pong and then the other one is the like not the underdog they're like the the big champion and there's seemingly no difference between them at all like they look exactly the same they sound the same but one of them is the champion and I want to do a training montage that's like the Pong guy like on you know doing weights or something but it's just a line <laughs> like pushing it <laughs> pushing the weights and doing a sprint Good way. while you got like you got a, uh, you got like I like I have the tiger or something or like um push it to the limits or something playing while while that's happening. Uh, I thought you were gonna say something like they get sucked into pong, and they become the pong paddles, <laughs> and all they could do is move up and down. That's all they and can do. Their life. They're trapped forever. there forever. They're they can't. That's they. There's nothing else they could do. They're just two sentient paddles. They can't communicate with one another. Just up and down. They probably don't even know that the other person is necessarily a Pong paddle. They just exist in this Pong game into perpetuity forever. E is for eternity. That sounds like fun. Yeah. It's not a happy story. Oh. <laughs> but the Pong fans will love it. Yeah. Those Finally, pong, a faithful pongs. adaptation of the Pong game. Where's Shawshank Redemption or the Green Mile? I'm not sure what you mean. Where, where are I don't they? know. Are they, are they, are they safe? safe? Are they okay? All right. hope so. Um, metal is Mauler's lap comfy. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining a little metal on like yeah. <laughs> sitting there with his feet yeah. dangling off, you know, kicking. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> his with a big head smile going on back his face and forth. And yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can that see it now. Funny, yeah. <laughs> Chris Stockman has about 150k more subs than Drinker, but Drinker averages close to 10 times views per video. How interesting. Also high rags. That's um, the important part, but hello. Yeah, subs don't mean anything. Like, it, it, in a way. Like, it's, uh... It is crazy how many, like... On, guys, it's, it's so important. How many accounts are just, it. like, dead on YouTube? 
Well, yeah, because I mean, there's not really that much of an incentive to unsubscribe, really. Uh, like, unless unless you're getting spammed with a bunch of videos, but like, there's not really much of a reason to unsubscribe. But I mean, just not watching anymore, right? Like that can easily happen. Yeah. And so then, yeah, you have a channel that's got like lots of uh, lots of subscribers, but not many views, and it's like, yeah, views is always going to be. How how much are people engaging with anything that you're releasing is way more important than like whether or not you've got a bigger subscriber number. And I think you'll find that Secret to Mario's jump was within us all the entire time. Brownwood the thrust. Secret, yeah. Oh. It's gonna be that's that's the happy ending where everything is right in the world. Mm-hmm. Remember when R2 almost murdered 3PO in episode two? It's yeah, weird. Yeah, what the fuck is up with that? That's it's legitimately weird. weird. I don't know what to say about that. When when he pushes C-3PO off for no fucking reason at all, and C-3PO goes on a series of horrifying misadventures that leads to R2 having to perform surgery on him <laughs> desperately in the middle of this huge war. I don't know what the fuck to think about any of that. It's so weird. What was, uh, what did R2... Is the implication that C-3PO was in his way? Well, he would have <laughs> told him to get out of the way, right? Yeah, like, they can communicate... Him. It's so yeah, weird. he just used his words, or his little like, droid speak. Boop, boop. And then he'd be like, oh, okay, I'll move out of the way. Yeah, no problem. Because I know that someone would be like, what do you mean? That part's just fun. It's like, C-3PO only got torn the fuck apart. Like, uh, and they're, they're best friends. Like, they've been with it's, each it's other like, for their whole lives. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird that he did that. <laughs> Makes you wonder about R2's feelings towards C-3PO. <laughs> I guess you could say that that was earlier in their, you know, time together, but still, they'd been friends for a long time at that point. Well, yeah, but R2 is arguably one of the most altruistic characters in the series. Yeah, like, like... R2 is an absolute super-duper hero, like, really goes out of his way. Like, he he's like a lad, you know? Like, yeah. everybody loves R2-D2. He's a lad. I'm just gonna say it. I think the character writing in the prequel trilogy is... It's really it's, bad. What? Scatter shot and water rough at times? Yeah. I don't know about that. Like, I don't think. Is there anything wrong with Qui Gon Jinn outside of the, like, stupider plot decisions? Like, character wise. Uh, you... Character is straightforward generally. Um, but I would say, I think it would have to be said that it's not as consistent as in the OT. Why, why did you even say that to me? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, uh, many moods ago I sent the EFAP without context quote from Rags quote the final aardvark is a graphic novel that is set in the cinematic universe of white chicks and he didn't believe it was something he actually said <laughs> what no I didn't say that but I have found the timestamp he said it in EFAP 27 at 7 11 15 I'll uh, post that for you if you're curious to hear it Rags they trick. said they you knew they didn't AI make it up. These days. Um, would you rather have a fussy, talks a lot, and needy person, or a oh, or dog, or a dopey dog? So a needy dog or a slow, doofy dog? Doofy. That's what they described it uh, as. I mean, I don't know, like how needy, <laughs> you know. I guess we don't know how needy or how doofy. You just got to choose between them. I mean, better to be... Well, I don't know what Doofy means. Uh, I guess the thing is, is that if Doofy <laughs> means, like, slow, then it's like, oh, I guess I can't teach him to do tricks and stuff, shit. Like, that feels like, feels like you're missing out on a lot of what a dog has to offer, you know? I think if I'm getting a dog, I'll go for the needy one rather than a Doofy one. I think so, because it's, it's, it just sounds like if they're not... It, 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 it just feels like I'm missing out on a lot of what's cool about dogs, which is, like, training them and, and getting them to do tricks and stuff. When Marnie Was There is an anime film. I remember it being okay, but I don't know why that is on the list. Fair enough. Oh, January 1st. Better get going on those taxes. Yeah, that's right. Good old, good old Flanders. Get uh, get ahead of him, you know. It's good. It's good. Flanders was all something. And then crusty. I'm an idiot. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us sorted out our taxes months ago. Oh, does anybody have a calculator? <laughs> uh. 
Empire was not very well received when it came out. It's such a Jared quote, not gonna lie. Anyway, happy That's new just, Crumbo. There's, yeah, there's boring. just no way. Unless everyone it's is boring. lying. Plus, there's no... Has is, is everyone been lying? Well, it's just about not that? true. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just bullshit. The... It's not the case. Empire is the reason Star Wars is what it is. It's it's the... Exactly. You have a new hope. Star Wars amazing, a craze, but Empire proves, oh, oh this thing is more than one. I see. Well, I, I mean, how, how do you score away the, 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 the reaction being that negative when it made so much money it justified the continuation of it to have, you know, like, Return of the Jedi rounded out as a trilogy, and Return of the Jedi was also massively successful. Compared to TLJ, where it's like, well, shit, I mean, you know, Rise of Skywalker made a lot less money, a lot fewer people went and saw it. Feels like there's got to be some correlation there between people not liking it. Yeah, it's almost like the success in the Star Wars films of any one film is seen in the follow-up. I think, I think so. I mean, you know, like, the, I mean, for instance, there's a level to which you could say, like, uh, the prequels, right? Phantom Menace came out, was successful, but, you know, had a level of uh, negative reception, and it shows in, in uh, um, Attack of the Clones didn't do as well. But then Revenge of the Sith ended up uh, making a lot of money as well. They all made a lot of money, though, to be fair. Like, it's just that Attack of the Clones was the least successful of the, of the group. Yeah, and that's why I'm so interested to see this this fucking Ray movie if it comes out. What kind of box office numbers it'll grab? Because Drinker said he's, he no. he imagines it'll look like solo numbers, which I think is probably pretty close I could to accurate. Say that. I'm, I could say I, yeah, that. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. Because it'll still make way more money than it probably deserves, but it would just it'll just be nowhere near what they want and. I just can't imagine. I really want to be a part of those board meetings when they make that decision. I want to know what they're, they're thinking. Who's who's telling them the lies? That well, this is I, a good I want decision. the wizard to tell me how confident are any of these people in the decisions they're making. Like as a you know, like as on a on a, a percentage scale, like how how much do they think that their projections are accurate? How successful do they really think it's going to be? Do they truly believe in it? I guess they do because they're putting all this fucking money, that, nah, millions and millions and millions of dollars. That's what I mean about being on the board, just seeing who who the one who's lying to him, who's the guy, who's, who's the one coming in with the, the whiteboard with the who secretly board. wants to destroy Star Wars. The, who's the one who struggles to sleep at night because they're thinking about just how much money they're gonna lose? I assume you guys have heard about this before, but it's just such a cool little story. The uh, the pitch for James Cameron for Aliens was apparently like he began the board meeting with. The word alien was on the whiteboard, and he took like a, <laughs> he took a yeah. pen and wrote a dollar sign on the end of it. So, <laughs> aliens. Like, that's just, it's so, that's it so just sounds funny. so chad. Like, yeah, we're yeah. going to make a shit ton of money <laughs> because it's a sequel. How about you just let me, just let me make a good fucking movie, and I'll make you a lot of money. Meanwhile, like, Ray, you know if you had... No one Ray. gives a shit. You know the magical wizard person is there and he's like, I'm going to wave my wand on whatever idea you have and make the perfect screenplay. So you can just pick a topic, pick some characters, pick a story. I will make it perfect. What do you want? Even if you choose Ray then, I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why Ray? Why? <laughs> like... Why Ray? Why, do you, why are you so attached to this character? She's she's not no even like likes. the worst of you know like when you look at Galadriel or um, the girl from Dial of Destiny or a lot of uh, a lot of like the really crappier new like fucking Wanda what they did to her um, Ray is like really boring compared to all of them she's not very, very offensive bland. kind of just, eh. yeah but, pretty much I mean that's, that's like her biggest problem is that she she inspires nothing she garners nothing in terms of a reaction she's like a nothing she's like a vacuum of a, <laughs> like yeah. of a character um which which is almost like that's like the worst thing you can be right the whole apathy you know indifference like it's it's worse certainly in a way like i guess I'm less annoyed to see the future of Rey than I am to see the future of several of the... Like, you know when Gladrill points back up in fucking Rings of Power Season 2, it is going to yeah, be like a, oh, for fuck's sake, here we go. Whereas with Rey, it's like, you're just such a nothing character. Yeah. You don't like, inspire anything. That's got to be worth something strange, the fact that if she, she could turn up and I'll be like, huh. Look, it's Rey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's Rey from Star Wars. Here she goes on another adventure. Yeah, versus like you know frustration or whatever. Because man, I I just a Ray movie. Like, are they actually gonna do that? 
Didn't you have three uh, of those already? Tools. That you that know? is crazy. That like a Ray movie is going to be. But I mean, really, all of the because I guess man the Mando movie probably makes sense. I don't um, even see like it making you... a lot of money though. The Mando movie. Uh, I think I agree because I think Mando stock is kind of uh, diminished considerably. Uh, but mostly because of season three, but I think in part it would probably is because of all of the seasons. I mean, obviously yeah. we think they all suck, but I it's well so uh, that uh, season one, two, and three together haven't made much of an impact. Like, what is there to latch onto in terms of a story or characters that you'd be like, man, I'm so excited to see them turn up again to fuck around for like another, you know, just on a bunch of side quests that are meaningless. You know, you talked about how uh, Fallout will have the trajectory of Mando more than likely can't be a guarantee Probably. but more than likely yeah. and it's like what what is because uh, I didn't have much pushback to that from anybody and I was surprised because of course the implication is that season one was bad and that's the truth behind the fall of Mando which is definitely what we would have a p opinion like like among other things we would say that season one wasn't even good to begin with and to dig into that it's, it's beyond whether or not you're entertaining, entertained by it. What I'm trying to get at, and I assume you guys would agree with this, is that there's, there's no, you're not building anything. Like, House of the Dragon Season 1 is going to feed into and make explosive other events, if they do this right, of Season 2 and 3. Mando Season 1, what did they it's build like a, that was... Built, he met like, Grogu. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That was the season I mean, where he I, met I Grogu. I think if you ask a lot of people... Hey, so how did you feel about, you know, like, Mando's arc with uh, the, the, the robot, you know, the droid that... And they'd be like, wait, wait, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah? Like, they wouldn't even remember that. that it, it's, uh, it's, I think that Mando very much benefited from the novelty of being the first, like, live-action, big-budget Star Wars show. And I think Fallout probably gets the same benefit of, like, hey, it's like Fallout, and they play 50s music, yeah. and... The props look like the props, but that won't, that's not, that'll only get you so far. When that happens again, like when you see the Death Claw, ain't gonna be as exciting, you know, next time as even seeing like all of the standard Fallout iconography in all likelihood. And it's like, well, shit, now the story actually has to substitute for that. And um, when there's a, when there's an absence of like meaningful or quality storytelling, you know, wh what have you got? Like, what is there to latch onto? What is there to be excited about or to uh to talk about to speculate on oh, that's the thing um i think that when you lose a lot of the distracting elements of uh the surface level you have to deal with the story the substance mm -hmm. and there's just nothing there yep almost anti which is, which is well it's like it's, it might be the worst problem to have is like when there's nothing because at least something can like muster a conversation and it seems like that's such an important part of whether a, a story, like a piece of art, is going to succeed, is how much can you talk about it. It's the reason why Avatar is such a, it's such a hard film for me to wrap my head around in terms of its success, because it just seems to, everybody watches it, but nobody talks about it. Yeah, no one talks about it. All it's those so people weird. saw it, all those tickets, all those butts and seats. But it, it just doesn't seem like that's how it works. If people don't talk about it, then people don't watch it, people don't think about it. They don't, you know, like the word of mouth is so valuable. And so surely the opposite of that, just a complete void of uh, conversation is detrimental. I think that um, a, lot, a lot of Mando's aesthetic is, uh, if you go watch season one again, right? Like it, it is all still there, but what a, yeah, I'd just love to ask some of these people, like, what, what is the writing? What, what is gripping you? What is what happened in uh, Mando season one? What happened in Mando season one, episode five? You know? And, and it's funny, because someone be, might be like, well, that's not fair. And it's like, well, I don't necessarily expect you to know what episode of Breaking Bad a story happened in, but I would expect you to remember it if you've seen it. You know? Like, you remember those moments. They stand out in your mind. And it feels like that's an important metric as well, as memorable moments. The, thing, the, the moments people come back to of like, man, that was so awesome. That's such a great payoff. You know, like, I am the one who knocks, or, um, or like the, the, the prison scene with the, all of the like, synchronized um, assassinations, or, uh, you know, like Gus's demise, these sorts of moments. Yeah. Absolutely. Um... Because, like, you know, people people would probably throw it at it that it's, like, the Jack Black Lizzo stuff. That's what destroys it. And it's, like... No, I, I don't... I Those think in a good show, people would just be baffled by it. But in the absence of anything worthwhile, when you see that, you're, like, what the... F what? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's just interesting to think about because it, I think that, that that's that's just an example of they don't have the sheen, they don't have the veil of, of being able to protect what is below and it's revealed. Yeah, yeah. That episode fucking has references to the Separatists. It deals with, like, you know, <laughs> droids, CIS, droids. Life, you know? Yeah, like, like, there's stuff happening in it, but, of course, the, the only thing we could really say, ultimately, is just, like, well, it was just pathetic writing, and it reminds me of just stripping away season one, which is much harder to do for the average person, because if you remember, we had immense pushback when we were trying to uh, break down season one but as the stream went on for the season one one like by the time we got to the end most people including our esteemed guest mr shadow Visti, had basically come to a point of being like yeah it's not very good huh <laughs> yep and um it's actually quite awful yeah and we look into it the worse it gets and that was never any different with any of the other seasons that's kind of the point i was i was going with because season two instead of even trying to use the veil of star wars which it still does it, it also runs with the whole like look at this person remember this person this person this person this person and then season three i don't know what the fuck they they were thinking with season three they lost their minds um like like the whole passing the torch to bo katan obviously the jack black lizzo stuff was just a huge mistake which when you find out that the thing behind that was i think john favreau's daughter noting that Lizzo dressed up as Baby Yoda or something, and then Jon Favreau was like, oh, let's get her in Star Wars. <laughs> this, that's like the uh, saddest, like, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I don't know, like, you know, a Mando Grogu movie is just like, what the fuck's that gonna look like? Those we'll find out. Um, anyway, happy new crumbo, love you guys. Hi, Wags. Hi. Yo, Efap, love the show. Was wondering if I could join the cast. Probably not. <laughs> like, we'll, <Nah>. uh, <laughs> you know, we, we have people on here and there from all stripes all over the place, but there's no definitive way of uh, getting on. Nor do I imagine will there be. It's sort of a... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Naturalistic approach. Yeah, something like that. Remember in TLJ when the bad guys paid JD after he betrayed the Resistance? Mighty fine of them... Mighty fine of them, a bad guy might just shoot them. The whole thing was weird anyway. They they bribed him to betray uh, them, but the way that they're written, you'd think they would um, just capture him as well once the betrayal's revealed. Just be like, whatever. Yeah. You know, because the first order is so like, cartoonishly evil, but they actually do yeah, pay him. Yeah, why let him live? I don't know. I mean, like, that's it's competent. Which is why it stands out. Like you want to, <laughs> yeah. You you want to establish a reputation of, yeah. If you like do stuff for us, we'll honor our deals and we'll pay you money. And encourages people to work with you. Which is odd, yeah. Because who would want to work with those fucking idiots? Um. TFA part five when also high rags. Hello. Who knows? Who can say? And the wizard even say? Probably not. The wizard. Even the wizard has his limits. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zodiac's fucking great, so don't like the shade. All, all you've said is that you disagree with, uh, about like, what we think of Zodiac. That's okay. Uh, Look, I've... I mean, I, it's just not that high on my ranking of, uh, of, of Fincher movies, but it's worth bearing in mind that Fincher is an incredibly reliable... Uh, storyteller, so it's not like an indictment really on that film. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if we gave a ranking or anything, it's just the Zodiac ranks lower it's... than most of the stuff from him that I yeah. love. Yeah, but again, bear in mind, like, you know, David Fincher, like, that's a competitive... He's made a lot of great movies, he's uh, he's really a, a reliable uh, storyteller. Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny being this like his most notable star being <laughs> alien 3 <laughs> yes it is honestly it is though like it's a gobbled production it's got all kinds of things it's not his movie it's not yeah. that's I, I don't hold him accountable for that film well and like anything that is considered pretty good about it is usually given to him uh, like yeah yeah exactly uh no country's lack of soundtrack is so immersive no Country yes, for Old Men, it's, it's just a uh, phenomenal movie. There's so much about it that it's, works. Oh, it's so good. But yes, the, the absence of a soundtrack, it's like it takes a while for you to realize, but it is fascinating because it's, it's just all diegetic sounds. There's nothing that comes from beyond the, the film itself. 
So it's got a very, like, naturalistic uh, feel. Uh, a shilling for the meter, keep the recreationalized autism going in the new year and for many years to come. Thanks for the top-notch entertainment. Of course. Some autism yeah. should be recreational. A lot yeah. of it we channel into our business pursuits. <laughs> but a lot of it's just for funsies. You know, we like to be memeing. Little tisman. Mm-hmm. Uh, why would you watch a Stuckman film? If he's too afraid to tell you his honest opinions in a YouTube video or book, why would you expect his art to be extraordinary and honest? He's afraid of boldness. I feel like people can be more honest in their art than in an, a, a, an then, overt and, review. Well, it's kind of the nature of, you know, like the idea of comedy, right? That if you make people laugh, you can get away with, you know, more and, in terms of observations. There's also, you can't not uh, express yourself when you make something like a movie. It's gonna happen. I don't, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it, even if you went out of your way not to, it's like, well, it, that in and of itself is an amount of expression. Yeah, I think it's inevitable, right? Especially if you've got a story with good guys and bad guys, right? Like, that, that's gonna say something about what you believe to be good values and bad values, like good virtues and, 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 um, and, and vices. Yeah, and I seriously doubt his film won't have something of a theme. There's gotta be a theme, surely. Yeah. yeah. I'd be surprised if, if there was no theme at all. <laughs> like, I don't even know if that's possible. Uh, and I certainly don't think he would be going into it without some kind of theme. Exactly. Um, EFAP Nostalgia Critic Matrix Review uh, was negative. Oh, I think interesting. So, like, that's not really reason enough to watch any particular video, right? Like, just, he thought yeah. Matrix bad. But, like, I've heard people recommend this one before. Like, apparently, the way he makes that video, or at least the arguments he makes, are particularly notable. We'll have to um, give it a consideration at some point. Maybe when we do some kind of, not Matrix arc, but, I don't know. If we have a reason to rewatch The Matrix, we could do, like, EFAP movies for The Matrix trilogy at some point, maybe. I don't really want to watch the fourth one again, but, yeah. Oh, God, no. That Don't was a tough me. one, wasn't it? That was... We almost quit. We did. That was a real we tough one We were actually quite close. And no, no amount of telling me it was on purpose is going to help anything. <laughs> uh, I'm Grey Snapshot Nigel Bloodbrass. Where does Saruman ask for the halflings unspoiled? Is this not just a co contrivance to keep them alive? Oh, why does he ask? Well, because he... No, it's not want... a contrivance at all. They, they don't know which one has the ring, right? And also, if one of them did have the ring, he'd need a lead. He'd need information. Yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of reason not to kill um, them as a sort of prize in, in a couple... He might kill them when he has them. It's something you, there's no reason that they can't just capture them, right? Because they're yeah. easy to carry and everything. You can kill them if you want, but you can't go back from killing them. Once they're dead, they're dead, so... Yeah. And they're kind of like... They're already not much of a danger. But once you tie them up, they're fucking... Mm -hmm. uh, is it crazy to think part of the reason the DLC was free and they're doing so much to treat Kratos well is because they want to build goodwill before switching over to Atreus and retiring Kratos? I don't... I don't know. I don't see why they, it, that just is Why a, can't you just want a really well-written Kratos? Well, Is I that not its own, you know... I don't know if it's going to be viable to make an Atreus game. Um, like, it would have to... Like, I don't know that the IP can float him enough to... The kind of fucking money they spend on these games, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't It th might be an element of like a side series. It might, it w probably wouldn't be called God of War. It would be in the same universe with the same characters, but they might change the name of the, uh, game series. Not impossible, but I don't know why we have to go cynical instead of appreciating what they made, you know? For yeah. What it is. Especially because if they said God of War as an IP is getting locked away and nothing will ever be made for it ever again. I'd probably be like, wow, well, there you go. Oh, wow. And uh, I'd be pretty happy with the story we got, you know? Um, but, yeah, if, if, if I were in the, the boardroom where they said, <laughs> we're going to make a really good DLC to make people believe in the IP, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, that's a strange motive as opposed to just making it good. But I guess we got something good out of it. So that's good. If they make an Atreus game... Uh, and call it God of War, and, and Kratos is baited in the trailer, but he's only in it for like 10 minutes or some shit, that will uh, very much baffle me, and that someone had power in that studio that didn't deserve it. 
because I just um, I, I I do enjoy Atreus and his story a lot, but they have to know Kratos is their moneymaker, right? Is that uh, yeah? I I don't think I would be so shocked if the next God of War wasn't you playing as Kratos again. It just seems like the I could totally buy the people behind um the the two Norse games are like we're happy we don't want it to do anymore. But I don't yeah, buy. Yeah, what do you mean Atreus games? He was I don't think Battle Sony. World. Yeah, like Sony would be like, "Come on, guys." <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling that Sony gonna be like, "This is getting made with or without you." So I think so. Um, well, I guess it's interesting because I mean, you know, Uncharted Four has been the end for nearly a decade at this point, and I mean, Uncharted Four was massively successful. So that's a degree to which they will stop. It seems. Uh, but I don't get the impression with like God of War. I think I, I think I think it's partly because it's like it's a pretty obvious like pitch to keep making God of War games. It's just like yeah, just put Kratos in a different. Then again, I mean you could keep doing it because there's I mean there's you know there's any number of like legends and myths and and like lost cities that you could keep doing for uh for Uncharted as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you could, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I, I suppose that's, I would still say it's interesting that, you know, they have not continued with Uncharted. Uh, Uncharted is over, even though Uncharted, I believe, is just, like, more successful than The Last of Us overall. I think so. I uh, Certainly more than The Last of Us 2. <laughs> that's for sure. And, like... Like switching over to a trailer, I just, I just don't, I don't see nah, that. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think even side if they project that, or a side say series, no. or a new series, maybe, maybe, maybe. You know, like the notion I, if I, someone I, said to us, like, can we at least test it to see if he can stand on his own? I should be like, why would we ever assume that why that's would you test it when Kratos is like iconic, um, and everybody? Yeah, likes we should him. count our lucky stars that Kratos has survived so iconically for this long, and that people are now very happy to see him. Like, in yeah, any capacity. like, I mean, you went from, you know, God of War Ascension when that was when they were starting to wonder if there was even any life left in the series to, nope, there's plenty of life. There might be more life than there's been ever uh, in the entire series. Yeah. Um, I just, I, it, see, it, it, I, mean, I say this as if there's never been a company that makes stupid decisions, but, you know, if they make a trailer and it's a pyramid and then you see a, a blade of chaos <laughs> or something... Yeah. whole crowd is going to lose their absolute fucking minds. Yeah, they will lose their that shit. I'll lose my shit. I don't even play the game. I would lose, I lose my, my shit, shit. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like the, uh, the Wojak, the one with, you know, the screaming Wojak. <laughs> with his arms Probably, because the <laughs> there's, there's so many things. Because yeah. you probably hear a hint of, like, the God of War theme, but, you know, Egyptian style or something. You'd be like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like, oh, my God. So yeah, I don't know. Like the idea that they're like, we could do that, or we could do a Atreus spinoff, uh, or rather Atreus taking the torch and uh, continuing the God of War series. Because in this game, you know, the, the beginning will be Kratos gets killed by some old god who hates him, and uh, Atreus is gonna have to take over as the new God of War. You'd be like, what the fuck? No. Um. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, you know, it's 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 funny to talk about all this when. Who knows what the fuck we're going to get from the future of God of War. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but I'll be willing to see what... Especially if it's anything close to the same team. If they come up with anything for the next God of War, I will uh, be very interested to see what they come up with. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Stray Tractor Cycle Snotless. I was the first Ooh. to suggest you last action hero. Mr. Dance is awesome, but Sir Ian is the goat of that movie. Um, Sir Ian? Um, am I forgetting who is uh, who is the Sir Ian? Is that, that's, that's narrowing it down quite a bit as well. I haven't watched Last Action Hero since I was hyper young, and I think we should watch that for uh, EFAP movies. Point. That could be fun. Oh, it's Ian McKellen. Yeah, he plays Death. I was wondering. I was like, well, is there any other Sir Ian? But was he in that movie? I, I well, he's going to be while. between Ian McKellen and Ian Holm. I was, I was curious. Oh, I right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, well, yeah, I'll, I'll want to be watching that again at some point. Yeah. Um. Please, Happy New Year. Please remind Frungus that he isn't allowed to be a part of the War Ark because his kind lost to emus and the rabbits. Hi, Ragus. Hello! Well, we never declared war on rabbits. 
Um, that didn't happen. I suppose we we didn't we didn't beat them in whatever it was that you would call it, but it wasn't a war. And <laughs> we won wars before. You know, we were on the winning side of World War One and Two. Yeah, counts for something. Yeah. Uh, I'm a slave. If you're going to pick two to win, then those would be the ones. Yeah, those yeah. are the ones to win. <laughs> those are the big ones. Yeah. I'm a slayed fraction of the Bible's cutlass. J is French for I, and French has lost a lot of contrapted words. So, je am a man would be a logical mistake. You mean jam a man? <laughs> oh, jam a man. Uh, do you ever watch Double Toasted Reviews? What do you think of their rating system? And Ever any chance of a collab? High rags. Hi. I do not know who that is. Double Toasted Reviews. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who that is. I think I've heard of them, but no, not familiar with their rating system and collaboration. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Always ready to make new friends? Yeah. Listen to Platoon. He is the Englishman here. He would know. Just listen to his voice. The man is the English perfected. Well, well. He does have a pretty good voice. Uh, get stuckmanized. Naturally. Remember, I before E except after C, or when it sounded like an A as in neighbor and way. What about in gym neighbors is way cool, and when is that gonna come up? It's on my apron. They just kept going with, with things, I think. But alright. Yeah. Uh, I approve. Um, how many words does one man need to say nothing? Hmm. I guess one. Uh, uh, none, hmm. right? Well, if they said how many words does one man need, uh, I don't know if the limit is one, like it has to be at least one. And, and that, and to say nothing, it's like, well, I guess he only needs the one word to say nothing. It's all about uh, interpreting the statement. But I think we gave both possible answers. Watched ER video on Mad Max recently. The vid is aged poorly, making points that don't make sense. Don't recommend the vid anymore. Uh-oh. Well, I mean... You've been called out. I, I've, I, the funny thing is, right, it's like... They sense anymore. They made sense and then they didn't? Apparently, yeah. They lost their As sense. Have, but... <laughs> have we been giving extra information that wasn't around for us anymore? Or... Just like the notion that... You know, like, I've decided you can't recommend this. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, man. Um, you know what? Maybe, maybe E.R. was completely wrong when he highlighted many of the very awful writing problems in that film. Despite the fact that I thoroughly enjoyed watching it, I, I, uh, I'll have to see it again in prep for watching Furiosa. Hell yeah, right, guys? Hype? Hype? We, we... One of the things I noticed about Furiosa was how fake it looked. And from the trailer that I saw, thinking about Mad Max and its, uh, its laudable practicality uh, that really helps you to get drawn into that world and helps it age well over time, uh, the Furiosa trailer looked remarkably fake. Yeah, A lot of obvious does. green screens, a lot of not-so-great CGI, and it instantly pulled me out of the trailer in not just a typical way, but also in the meta element of this is part of a series, or it's adjacent to a like series. That is, like, notably scuffed. You know, yeah, Mad Max has a very scuffed quality to it. Yeah, it's noted. It, it's, it's very notable for its, its tangibility um, in the same way that uh, many old movies are. The, you know, this, this, uh, this focus on the practical effects, the real stuff, the work, and the, um, what, what the, the coordination that goes into making all these things happen, being able to appreciate, oh shit, that woman's on top of an oil tanker going down the highway and this other guy's jumping around and that's like real shit. You well, know, it looks a lot more fake than um, Fury Road as well. Fury Road oh, yeah. uh, like didn't feel like it was yeah, it not real. where it was actually set. It, it had a, I don't know, this one I'm just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Even down to its name, Furiosa and Mad Max Saga, it's like, why? You're not, you're not comfortable standing on your own? <laughs> like, you gotta throw Mad Max's name in there? Just to make we sure We want to use Mad knows. Max, but we don't want to use Mad Max. We don't want to use Star. Mad Max. Yeah, we, want him, we don't want him to be, like, the movie about him, but we need, we need his name to sell the movie for some other, for, for some chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But hey, um, 
Maybe uh, maybe I'm do a rewatch of Fury that? Road and a rewatch of VR's video ah. to tear it apart for its wrongness. Apparently, I can't be recommending that anymore. Mm. That'd be crazy. Does Chris have editors? Does he proofread? What? I don't what? see why you would have an editor. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. don't like, he has pictures on screen every once in a while? I think. I don't see why you'd need an editor at that point. Like, you can you can sort that out, surely. Unless you mean for his movie, in which case, of course. Uh, remember the Simpsons episode where Bart had to give a book report on a book he'd never read? It was uh, Treasure Island or something, right? I think... I remember... Th yeah, I, I don't know. I'm crossing wires with... Because there was one with Lisa where she was pretending to be sick. And she had to do a book report, right, for, like, the, wi the Wind in the Willows? Yes. Something like that, yeah. Where she was playing, uh, Dash Dingo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not Chuck Sorry, even Australian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this super chat is Bone, and the lettering is something called Cillian Rail. Okay. That made sense to me. The follow-up super chat says, I don't get it, and I'm feeling that one. Hmm. Silly and rail. Luke Thanks. And rail, silly and Murphy, yeah. And Happy New Year. For your information, San Francisco Symphony is doing Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring in April, and Toronto Symphony, Two Towers, in January or February. Oh, awesome. go to that one. That'll be one to see. It really is different when you hear it in person. If you have a chance, you should absolutely go to a symphony, some sort of orchestral performance, and hear some of that stuff. It's really good. Mauler and crew, love y'all. Been watching every week and catching up on the old ones. This year I've watched through EFAP 47, my rags, my massives, and this is the only joy I have left in my life. Oh. Well, it's something. Yeah, I mean... It's I, something. I guess they, they came in on the boogie stuff and went back. Makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, thank you. Mola, many in chat thought he was referring to Jaws the Shark. Is he referring to the shark or the tall Bond villain with the metal teeth? Who's he? I don't Jaws. remember this conversation, but uh, I imagine I... context clues will give away whether or not they're talking about the man or the shark. I'd hope so, anyway. The man or the shark? Sounds like a... <laughs> He's more shark than man now. You guys, uh, you guys know Jaws from James Bond? Yeah, he uh he 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 escapes with that one um lady with the pigtails. I just remember him biting through um chains to uh, unlock a door, I think. That's one of the things he does. He does a lot of stuff. Man the man's got some jaws. He really does. The man's got some jaws. Uh, oh wow, I actually own a copy of this book that Stuckman himself autographed. Met the man in Akron back in twenty seventeen. Can't say I'm proud of it anymore. I think we may have read this one out at the time. I I, I it said sounds like, familiar. I don't want to like like I wouldn't encourage that. Like the, you know, the, 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 the memory of that of for life. you is is something you should you know cherish. Yeah, like it's it's a fun thing. It's a it's a meaningful thing. If if Chris he encouraged your sort of passion for film, and you actually did gain stuff out of he, he was clearly we showed clips of it. He's clearly more passionate uh, years ago. Yeah, something say. changed. He's definitely, I mean, no one would be the same person they were that long ago, but it seems like, in particular, he, he's just, he really is an entirely different sort of person. Yeah. And that's a shame, because old Chris seems like, a, like a, a cool, wacky guy who has a lot of passion, and this is like, like the simulacrum of passion. Something so, happened. I was trying to think of if it, like, what is the equivalent that could happen to me? And it's like, if I started working on movies, maybe met with all the people that I've shat on the past, and then I, I'm with them uh, making a film, they release it, and then they watch like a cavalcade of just getting torn to shreds. And I see the effect it has on them emotionally. The standard arc, you know, they could make a movie about this. And uh, it's like, so then what would you do? And it's like, I feel like I would have to be honest and say, um... I don't have the passion for this anymore. Not because I don't think it's the right thing to do. Because I don't think I could ever be convinced of that. I feel like you need the um, push and pull of creatives and critics. Like, uh, it's so weird to yes. live in a world without it. And so I'd, I'd probably have to just admit, like I said, what I think the truth would be, which is um, I can't participate in both sides of the world anymore without 
having a heavy bias toward one of them. And I'm going to have to choose, you know, and if if it's this one, then it's this one. And th that's where I feel like would be the honest version of what Chris is doing is like, instead of saying we should not be critical of films that have artists behind them or whatever have you, because there's so many holes to what he said anyway, right? Because that means any film he avoids reviewing is the bad one, which is already super awkward for the filmmakers, isn't it? Like anybody, if you're a friend of his and he's reviewing every film and then he says, I won't review yours, you should have to be like, oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> I guess well, I fucked up then. Review. And at that point, wouldn't you then be like, wait, what, how do you give me constructive feedback then? Like, I, I, I would want you to just be like, no. Mm. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to upset and plus, you. Plus, then you would eventually get wise to the fact. I mean, like, Chris Stuckman obviously knows that everyone knows when he says the things he said about, you know, Madam Webb. He, he, he's given it a negative review without yeah. going through the trouble of making a two minute negative review. So, him recognizing that, I wonder how he's going to go forth in the future with admitting publicly and openly that he didn't see a movie or that he's not going to talk about a movie. And is he going to be able to actually say, I'm not going to talk about this movie in a way that isn't supposed to be negative or because he's hiding back negative things or is it because he just doesn't have anything to say and... Can his has he set himself in a position where his empathy or his apathy is being confused with negativity, which is almost like really ironic. I'd also be very curious what kind of world he envisions uh, if everyone did what he suggests is the good thing to do. As in, we all go to the cinema, we see Madame Web, and we all go, hmm, that, that film wasn't about anything in particular. It wasn't particularly well executed. You can see the failures of the craft, and so uh, it is unfortunate. All right, next film. You know, like we don't, we just won't be talking about that one. Just, I don't it's know if that's before. You know, I feel like that's sadder for the um. Like, what would you want your, your 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 what would your preference be that the world goes silent when you release your art, or that the world is angry at it? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I know intuitively it could be like that. surely silence would be the preferable, but I just mean like, could you imagine the whole like any type of you like what do you think? And you're just like, eh talking about that I one. feel like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the element that you're not making any impact whatsoever it's got to be super demoralizing. I'd I think probably so. go with making people angry than not having any impact whatsoever. It's, I guess it's hard to say until you experience it, but I just don't understand why we would want to encourage a world where Madam Web comes out and everyone agrees to be silent on it. As if in protest or something. <laughs> yeah. That's the bit. It's yeah. like... Good God, as if no good things came from people being, you know, like critically assholes to, to a thing. I don't know. Very uh, can't find the crown on Google Images, but I think he made this in MS Paint. Is it just the page being bent, or is the thing actually non-symmetrical? Oh, it was non-symmetrical, I'm pretty sure, the crown. It was very rough, the, the crown they gave Aragorn. You guys remember that? I do. That's <laughs> the return of the king. And he <laughs> uh, well, that wasn't even the funniest one, right? We had a bunch of images that were hilarious. It was one of the ones you'd mentioned. There was one. What was the funny one? I mean, I'd have to go back and recall specifically, but I know we cracked up. He brought us immense joy. The he problem did. is that he can only really do that when he doesn't intend to. Yeah. Which is still something. That is something. Some people aren't even able to do that. Exactly. Um, I actually liked Rebel Moon. The aesthetics and fight choreography were cool, but it fell short of great. Has anyone else seen Dark Matter series? Good lord. Is that, are you memeing? No, they seem to be I, serious. Yeah, I, <laughs> okay. I thought the fight choreography was like fucking Terrible, trash. and I thought terrible. it was not even close to approaching greatness. Well, and I, and yeah, I thought the aesthetics I, were horrific, so... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a weird really mishmash to look at. Random shit. What do you think of Rebel Moon Two? Woo! <laughs> 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 uh, Happy New Year to all you massives. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. The Empire is never more alive than when we sleep. Stop sleeping on Andor, as it's great and not boring. If you can get through Ahsoka, you can watch Andor. He did get through all of Ahsoka. That's true. But not Andal. Too sleepy hmm. for Andal. 
If Ooh, Christmas wow. and Halloween were switched days of the year, would you still like them as much? How different would they be? I don't know. Kind of weird to think about. Say, sorry, sorry, say that again. If Christmas and Halloween had their days switched? Say that again? I mean, I don't think it'd be that different, really. I mean, I think one of the... Well, I think one thing that you would lose... Actually, I think it would. Um, one of the things that people often kind of overlook is that uh, the way that the months are separated as far as seasons go, uh, Christmas is only four days into winter. It's like right at the beginning of winter, we have Christmas hitting. Um, the majority of December is actually fall. So the swapping those around, Christmas would, I think, eventually lose a lot of its winter aesthetic and winter kind of um, ambiance and Halloween would pick up on it because if you move, you know, Christmas to October 31st, then it might be t-shirt, you know, weather outside, depending on where you are. You know, I mean, we've had Halloweens here in Arkansas where it's been quite nice. It's been, you know, 60s, 65. It's been quite, quite pleasant. So you definitely lose something in terms of the Christmas, the snow, and that whole, you know, the white Christmas kind of aesthetic. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want that. But you get a, you get a cold Halloween. Halloween would be set in, you know, it, it would be the one in the snow and, and the deep winter. Halloween's just sort of a chilly holiday now, but it would become a cold one over time. So yeah, I think obviously in Australia, it would be really hot. Um, True, yes, <laughs> springy, yeah, in that. the southern hemisphere, yeah, be different. Yeah, um, yeah I, I would say is, uh, Halloween's aesthetic is definitely tied to uh, autumn, autumn. for Americans. Fall being the uh, like decay of everything almost like, can get tied to the cycle of life where it hits a, a brownish sort of... Uh, dormancy, like I feel like that—that that is a good part of the feel of Halloween. Um, so yeah, I mean, it would—it would have drastic effects. We probably aren't even thinking about, but plenty of uh, surface level ones too. But I still think they would both be enjoyed thoroughly. Muller, I'd love to know your thoughts on Men of Honor, one of my favorites from my childhood. Either of you guys seen that? No. Uh, let me double check. Cuba Gooding Jr. and Robert Oh, Niro, the diving yeah. one. Yes, I do. I have seen this. I don't remember much about it because it's been a while, but I, I do remember this. I remember liking I remember it. liking it. I haven't seen yeah. it in so long now, though, that I can't really comment. But um, maybe it's one to rewatch at some point. But yeah, um, I remember good feelings about it. That's the best I can give you. Uh... I also like my main memory is that they uh, they have a competition in the diving suits. I remember that scene being pretty good. So, um, or rather, just the helmets portion of them. But uh, anyway, salutations. Hello, happy new year to you all. This has been my first year of EFAP, and I love it. I found so many new favorite YouTubers through this podcast. So thank you, and let's all have a great 2024. Hey, it could happen. We could. We could have a great 2024. Not impossible. I mean, we're still, like I said, this could be the year of terrible disappointment and broken dreams. But so far, you know? Yeah. So far. Um, Happy New Year, lads. Hi, Rags. Hello. Happy New Year. Read Super Chats live again. We, uh, we do if we have the, the time slot sort of matches. Yeah, the problem is that instead of... Uh, it's that, well, we have really long episodes, and so by the time we get to the really long episode, it's been four, five, six, seven hours, potentially. And after that, we're, uh, the gas tank is starting to run a bit dry. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I mean, obviously, it's not that we don't appreciate it, but it would just be, it's, it's, it's the, the two-pronged element of, obviously, time and going super late and us getting tired, but also the fact that having them as their own videos that people can search up and look up that we, you know, specifically dedicate ourselves to when we're, you know, sort of, you know, fresh, so to speak. Yeah, I think that, I think that, you know, means something. I think that goes a long way, answering the questions when we're uh, not tired. Yeah, after you talk for stuff for, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight hours, you're kind of ready to, 
you're, you're, you're hungry, hungry or sleepy, and you, yeah. you you're hungry and you want to pee, so you just decide. You know what? We will answer all of these in a dedicated video when we're a bit more lucid. Chris Duckman is the young year of YouTube film critics. Oh. I haven't watched enough of Young Year to say. I don't know. Well, I, I guess it's just the idea that it's bland, right? It's like bland, kind of obvious observations. Fair enough. I think Stuckman is either A, extremely slow, or B, psychopathic and devoid of human emotion. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, oh. I, don't, I don't think so. I think that's I, I think... He's a psychopath. <laughs> He's just like a boring cyborg. He's lost his passion for this side of film, mainly. And so that's the, the of interesting it. part is, will that passion manifest in the film that he's making? Certainly hope so. I hope so. Um, Rags, has anyone said you sound like Ralph the Movie Maker a bit? No, I don't think anyone's ever said that. And if they did, they're wrong. Certainly don't sound like him to me. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't. Also, Mola, did you clip you beating Gale? Your yes scared me. I didn't, know, but I was very happy with that. It was, uh, Dark Souls 3, I did a playthrough on stream. It was fun on the bun. Also, also, hi, Ralph. No, no, Rags. Not Ralph. It's not Ralph. I don't think he'd come hi. on EFAP, you know? Seems unlikely. Um, and yes, that is the final message of the night for the new oh, year. Oh my goodness. Wow. Thank Goodbye, you 2023. Yeah, and welcome to 2024, right on time. That's right. Uh, we just started. Just I feel like I feel day. like January the 1st was just yesterday. Yeah. It was yeah, not four months ago. No way. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank goodbye, you so much everybody. Have a we good will see day. See you later. Bye, bye, bye. bye.